Good evening. We have returned from a small hiatus for Memorial Day, but now it's officially summer. And summer in London can be warm and humid. But we'll go there anyway, because there's mysteries afoot and we have to see what's going to happen next. Welcome to Happy Jack's RPG. This is London Calling, our vase in actual play. I'm Kadave, uh, the master of mysteries for the evening. Um, and uh, just as a upfront heads up, this game is a game that's going to have some horror themes and creepy things and communicating with spirits and dealing with the dead and possibly gore and all kinds of things like that. In addition to also trying to seduce supernatural creatures and not supernatural creatures uh, in and around London in the 1920s. Uh, so if any of those things aren't for you, we'll hopefully catch you on the next one. I understand not every game's for everybody. Yeah, maybe the next game will all be, you know, E for everyone. But this one is not. <laughs> uh, I would not sit your kids down in front of some of the descriptions of things that happen in this game. Well, my <laughs> That's kids watched uh, Event Horizon. It worked out very well. <laughs> oh, I was gonna say, I was like, well, what if our next? I, I, I was gonna suggest our next game be the uh, gay pirate game, but like, you know, I would like. Well, that. I mean, that will also not be kid friendly. That's. Uh, yeah, yeah, but that's okay, because not everything has to be for everyone, and we're cool with that. We are also a fan of safety tools in our tabletop RPGs. We were we are zealous advocates of the X card. So if we get to anything in live play that bothers any of our players or me, uh, because the players can creep me out too, um, we can all throw up an X card and we just move on, no questions asked, to something else. And that doesn't have to be part of our fiction. We also have a Lines and Veils document that we uh, discussed uh, some things ahead of time before the game started to things that people want to avoid or just not have part of their fiction. And we're cool with that because we're here to have fun and not to push anybody's buttons and be obnoxious. So there we are. Uh, let's go around the table and introduce everybody else. Let's start with Mitch. Hi, I'm Mitch. You can find me at Mitch S. Uh on Twitter's. And uh, yeah, I'm playing Diablo today. She's dead, so it'll be a short session for me. Oh, well. <laughs> All right, uh, Sam. Hello, I'm Sam. I play Sean Jones, our resident real occultist and fake Welsh person. So I'll cut off the spam. Mm -hmm. Can you not I hear me? Hear Sam. Yeah, I hear you fine. Not going through on the stream? Everything seems going good on this end. Go ahead, Sam. Hello? I think, I think we're fine. Oh, I already did it. Okay, it's done. Clara, <laughs> can you hear me? You can't I don't think hear Clara me. can hear you. Clara, head towards the light. <laughs> I lost sound is the answer. <laughs> are, are you back now? I think I'm back. All right, cool. Okay. Yes, we can hear we oh could hear God. you all along, but you stopped well, being able to hear us. But now yeah, you're back. Which so is cool. Embarrassing because I definitely just blamed Sam. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's fine. <laughs> ah, balls. Anyway. I'm sorry. What did I miss in the time that I made all of you panic? Oh, you're up to you're up for your who you are and what you're doing here. Oh hi, I'm Clara and I like to ruin things. Um I'm Clara, and I play uh, Saoirse Sheehy, a uh, Irish writer and uh, general disapprover-ish of the three of us, four of us. I am the one who disapproves the most of the Voss and wooing. That might change. Who knows? Uh, so, um, and as you may notice, we have an empty square in our... Uh, Hollywood Squares of Victory. Um, Kurt won't be joining us tonight, um, but the Texas Tornado, uh, after facing the, the death of his friend Diablo, has decided to go off and punch out his feelings 
in the various underbelly fighting arenas of London. Um, so he's probably uh, pretty bruised up and sleeping it off on a locker room bench somewhere. Uh, and he'll rejoin us when we get back to the next episode. Uh, yeah. So, um, before we go too much farther, we should probably talk about what happened last time, because it's been a while. So, Sam? I was muted. <clears throat> it has been a while. I don't remember what happened. Let's find out. <clears throat> Session six. The crew met up post uh, show and burglary. Uh, Diablo um, brought Patricia, the door lady, a snack and refused medical treatment from her. Uh, Patricia gave Diablo a special knock. Diablo was raring to get back to the murder basement, but still bleeding, so Jackie offered to take him to an underground medic. Uh, and then Jackie takes his frustrations out in a boxing match, sensing a theme. Uh, Sarsha and Sean go back to Rose's house for some rest, where Sarsha falls asleep in the library, and Sean puts her to bed with a lullaby. Jackie and Diablo return to find the house quiet and the library newly stocked with American whiskey. Diablo does some ritual cutting while Jackie has a drink. Sean researches the enchantment, and it looks like proto-Gaelic. It's an attention amplifier. In the morning, Diablo asks uncomfortable questions, and Sean... Uh, shows uh, them the tr translation of the enchantment. Hawkins brings out a coffee carafe and full assortment of past pastries, A plus butlering. Diablo threatens to murder Sersha if Pat Patricia turns out to be the bad guy. The crew heads to the theater where Diablo does the special knock, no answer. Sean tries to pick the lock, but doors remain a formidable foe. The name on uh, 203 in the um, apartment building is Kara Iceling, wait, ailing, also Gaelic. Hmm. There's a case of milk freshly delivered. A noise happens when Diablo knocks, but we're not sure what it is. He chugs a milk and then stabs himself with the bottle in a bid to get help, but no one comes to the door. Sarsha picks the lock with some difficulty. It's chained, but Jackie shoulders it open. There's an unusual smell of spoiled or sour food. Diablo heads towards the bedroom and opens the door to find no furniture, uh, but a lot of theater lobby cards around the walls. Next to each one is a desiccated female corpse going back a long time. Cause of death appears to be throats torn out. Sean goes to investigate a steamer trunk, opens a drawer, but there is a surge of energy and crackling flame. Inside is kind of a strange kit to change appearances. Almost all women's accessories. Diablo finds the corpse of Christopher, our missing boy, in the closet, at least a few days old. Sarsha checks the kitchen, where a pile of bones and cartilage sit in the corner. Sarsha and Sean think this sounds a bit like a glystig. Diablo uh, shoves poor Christopher up through the trapdoor and hears someone go, what was that? And the footsteps above. He hurls the corpse up into the bedroom uh, and hears a horrified man scream and then a thud. He heads up there and sees Adam in just his pants. Ruth Autumn is in bed, screaming, uh, and the rest of the three climb up and out of the closet. Diablo hops out and grabs Ruth Autumn to stop her screaming, while Saoirse com comes out sneezing and tries to calm them, but they're not having any of that. Sean comes out of the closet and Goblin Kings them into calming down, uh, while Jackie pops out to see the mesmerized pair, uh, and then follows Saoirse out to the rest of the apartment. In the hallway, uh, they encounter Patricia, but a weirdly stretched elfin version of her with three taloned claw hands and cloven hooved feet. She's crouched at the end of the hall. Sarsha swears in Gaelic and shoots at Patricia, uh, but she pushes off and dodges. Jackie charges Patricia and pummels her in the gut, spinning her around to make an opening. Uh, but she turns to, to Jackie and tries to bewitch him. It doesn't affect him, uh, but he do she does shrug off the grip. Sarsha points her gun at Ruth and tells Patricia she'll kill Ruth if she doesn't stop, but Patricia just laughs. Jackie punches her in the back of the head, whipping her forward. She stumbles and jabs her claws into the wall, then starts running past them to the window beyond, leaping out of it. Diablo, to everyone's surprise, jumps out after her. Blankets uh, used as a parachute, but Patricia catches him and then runs off. 
John gives Ruth something to wear and tells her she needs to move because her downstairs neighbor tried to kill her. Also probably get a new job and don't lie to investigators. Diablo suffers a spinal injury, so we rush him to the house, and with the help of Jackie's doctor contact and Hawkins uh, leading us to the infirmary, they manage to realign Diablo's spine, but he appears to be dead. All right. <clears throat> so. This episode, we're going to pick up with... Uh, having been back at Rose house for a bit. Um, and, uh, Hawkins has prepared the house to receive visitors. Um, because it's time to have a wake for Diablo who did not survive his fall. Uh, but, um, so he's set up a parlor with seating. Diablo is is laying on a, a just covered in uh covered in roses uh table. Like uh it, it looks like he must have cut down half a forest uh worth of rose bushes to, to lay this out. Um but luckily it also helps keep the room from smelling awkward at all because it's just a severe concentration of roses. Um, the uh, dining room is laid out with like the table that is designed for 18 guests is end to end a buffet, right? It is laid out with, you know, in the middle, there's a whole, roast hog with an apple in its mouth and just this this lavish banquet meal has been laid out um and the house while always clean is immaculate right even all the books you guys have pulled out and just left all over the library have been resorted back into their places um and oh i almost forgot before we get farther into that we have to ask our questions. Questions. Why is so, this night different from all other nights? Sorry. Uh, the first set of questions we're going to do now, and the second set of questions we'll do in a uh, um, couple of minutes after we do our finish our opening scene. So the first questions are for experience points for your character. So number one, did you participate in the session? You get a point. Yeah. Number two, did you confront any Vason? Yep. Yeah. yeah. Number nice. three, did you identify a previously unknown Vason? Yes. Yeah. 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 You definitely confirmed who was what. Uh, number four, were you affected by your dark secret? Mm, no. no. I don't really think so. Uh, number five, did you take risks to protect other people? Yes. Uh, number six, have you learned anything new and what? Don't trust theater door ladies. <laughs> Death sucks. <laughs> Stage managers are terrible. Um, hmm. I don't know that we learned new new things we did sort of like solving the mystery feels like learning something new but i think it's different i don't know uh yeah i, I don't <laughs> no nah, i don't feel like that counts yeah all right uh the next one did you develop anything at your headquarters no uh but you'll get a chance this session not yet uh and number eight did you perform an extraordinary action Diablo died. <laughs> Diablo yeah. leaped Booyah. from the window. Yeah, definitely counts. I yeeted myself. It's great. Um, anybody else think anything? Extraordinary? Uh, no, not that I can think of. No. Okay. Cool enough. 
And then if you have more than five experience points, you can use that to up a skill or to take a new talent that you have access to from your list or from the uh, general talents. In the book. Uh, I have eight, and I have no idea what to spend mine on. <laughs> I know, right? This is the hardest part. For, leveling up is always like the my least favorite part of games because I, so, uh, I suck at it. I think I'm going to multi-class. You, you can think about is if you want, you can think about the things you did last session, especially if they were things you haven't done a lot. Like, I don't know, you, you shot at a vason repeatedly. Yeah. Uh, you, um, I don't know what could help you. Um, I can up my precision, I'm sure. Or not precision. No, not, uh, yeah. Skill uh, ranged combat is a skill I can up. Absolutely. Uh, stealth also that might make to. doors easier to defeat. <laughs> you know what? Yeah, I'm going to take a point in stealth. <laughs> Holy shit. Listen, I was still defeated by a door and I have a three in stealth. Yeah. Yeah. It just doesn't want um, us to. I'm going to add one to my investigation because I feel like we've been doing a lot of that. Sure. I also want to point out that doors didn't just stop us, but Patricia could not get out of the just doors are the worst. Truly the worst. Maybe it's just oh. that apartment building, right? Like that apartment <laughs> building was it's Oh, it was the theater uh, too. Yeah, the theater also oh, got yeah, us. Oh yeah, yeah, you're yeah. right, you're right. We did learn something new. Always go out the window. <laughs> the window did not stop Diablo even a little bit. Nope. Uh, <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. So, uh back into our scene. The house is prepared. Um, there are, uh, there are like flower arrangements everywhere. Like every surface is now covered with, with flowers. Um, and it's, it's afternoon, right? Uh, later in the afternoon when he opens the front door to the house and just leaves it ajar. Um, uh, and outside, uh, there is a line of people that start to come into the house and it's, it is a parade unlike any you have ever seen. Um, you've got the first person through the door is someone that's dressed just as finely as the Duke that you met previously, uh, but you don't know who they are, uh, comes in, removes, like, wearing, like, a full black suit in the latest fashion, takes off his hat. Uh, Hawkins takes the hat and, like, turns around, and you didn't even know, but behind one of the panels in the foyer, there's a whole coat closet. So he's taking hats and coats and umbrellas and everything as people come in. Um, uh, then, uh, he comes in and he sort of nods to you guys standing there, unless you've decided not to come down yet, but proceeds into the parlor and like walks right up to the table and like kind of lowers his head and then gingerly reaches out and touches Diablo's forearm a little bit as he lays there. And then he goes and sits and is the the epitome of like the stiff upper lip British person, right? Like it will not show even a fleck of emotion, but is standing there looking almost like a wax figure. Um, next in line is a, a woman wearing a like giant, uh, like Versailles era gown just huge with a train and there's some kind of servant behind walking behind a young boy walking behind holding the train she comes in walks up ends up taking up three of the chairs in the parlor because of the dress uh <laughs> then uh um just every person coming through the door looks in some state of shock or sadness, 
Um, and they all come in and you see, you know, the next one that comes in, uh, is just very plainly dressed. Um, but clearly has put on like Sunday best, you know, this is, this is, uh, they're wearing, uh, just a, a sort of a gray wool pinstripe vest with a shirt sleeves, uh, comes in and takes off a little cap and walks over and then goes up and like starts whispering things at Diablo. Like he has a lot to say. Uh, and people, you've never seen any of these folks before. Even Sean might have, might recognize a couple people like from places that you performed, right? Where you okay. did a seance or, or something like that. But it is just a parade of folks hmm. um, that are all coming in and giving their, their well wishes. And then in comes... In comes this person that immediately like waves at at where Diablo is in the parlor and just goes right to the buffet and starts piling a plate full of food and then walks back out the door with the fine china plate from Rose House and, and the food. Uh, like it, there's just like I say, it's just a, a cast of thousands like Cecil B. DeMille film of folks. And some are just coming in and walking past him and then leaving. And some are sitting for a while. A few of them start talking to each other. You see a couple that actually look at each other and have a shocked look like, what are you doing here? What, what, what are you doing? Like, there's clearly, for lack of a better term, eyeball fencing going on like back and forth across the parlor. Like, just throwing daggers one way or the other. Um... And it doesn't seem to be slowing down, right? Like, there's just this stream of folks. Uh, is there anything I, either of you guys would particularly like to do while this is happening? I'm so confused. <laughs> uh, at a certain point, I think uh, Sersha will go from, like, absolutely just bewildered by the array of people to doing the like it, it, like the very writerly like uh what's your story how did you know Dia like she's starting to like okay. basically interview people out of curiosity because she's like i just worked with him <laughs> um I'll, yeah so you'd get a variety of responses depending on the person you're talking to so some people are like he was the kindest person I ever met. And the next person goes, you know, that you talk to is they, they helped me out so much. Uh, I, my business wouldn't have survived without Diablo. And the next person is, I, they've never, there will never be another that can match Diablo's skill if you know what I mean, and like gives you the elbow and the wink, wink, nudge, nudge in Monty Python fashion. Uh, and, and then like the very next person in line is like, yeah, that, they're right. Yeah. <laughs> you know? and, and the, it's just, like I said, everything, every response that you record is just bizarrely different from the next one. I don't, yeah, okay. And I, I definitely think I'm writing them down as well, like uh, uh, with the intent to sure. store these in the uh, annals of the li of the library, et cetera. Sure, sure. Um, there's also a, like a couple of people that are, are like the full on like wailing type, right? Like comes in, sees Diablo there and is, you know, on their knees, just, ah, just, screaming and everyone else is kind of like oh come on right He's like <laughs> the rest of us are keeping it together here and they're just and like you've never seen these people before like if they were this close a person to diablo you'd you'd be like we we would have had some contact especially sean right 100 percent. yeah but no like these are these are people like you would you would presume that these people were paid to come and overact Right, like okay. that's 
that's how much. But then, you know, they're kind of ushered. Like, Hawkins pauses the line for a minute and lets them collect themselves, and he guides them to a seat. It's almost like... If you ever turn your head enough that Hawkins is just at the corner of your vision, it's almost like he's in two places at once, right? Mm -hmm. Like he's refilling a chafing dish and you could have sworn he just took a hat and a cane from someone at the door and you're, yeah, he's just, he is all over this social event that this has become. Impressive. Um, I think Sean would be kind of observing the people and just looking for anybody that might stick out as like um magical in any way like not necessarily looking for hmm. uh for basin perhaps but like just uh people that might have a sort of magical aptitude or like something okay. supernatural about them okay um you actually do see a couple of people that walk up to the door like the threshold like they're gonna come in and then they get right there and go and kind of turn back and like slowly take a step back and you actually see Hawkins and he tenses up a couple of times, right? Oh. Like if someone, one of these people approaches the doorway and he kind of like begins to lean forward like he's about to take a step, but then they back away slowly and he doesn't. He just sort of sinks back to his heel. Um, and they they kind of walk off down the, down the street. Um, okay, should, we, should we let... Uh, I was going to say, if, if Sir Sherwood ca caught it, catches this, should we let Vasin, who mourn him, come in? I mean, I would, but they can't get in the house for some reason. Oh, uh, this is a bad idea, but I feel weird not. Hawkins? <laughs> and his voice actually comes from just behind you. He goes, yes, <laughs> mum. Uh, the, there, are, there are folk who are turning away. You're turning away? No, there are folk that are choosing not to try and enter. It Why? is quite different, I assure you. They are not compatible with the house. Is that a thing that you can pause for the moment? I would advise strongly against it. If I were to take an action like that, it would leave the house vulnerable. <sighs> Perhaps we can arrange something at a pub later. And I'll look at Sersha, and I'll look at um, Shion to make that final call. Yeah, I think that uh, seems reasonable. Okay. Um, uh, eventually, uh, you do see a woman come in that is dressed almost in what looks like a costume, right? She is fully decked out in, like, soothsayer regalia, right? She is, she's got a sort of, she looks a lot like the Reverend Mother from the New Dune. Like, she's got the net over her face and it just hung with, with black crystals. And she comes in and she's, She's a surprisingly younger woman. She's not older, but uh, she comes in and, like, just she's perfected the glide walk, right? Where, like, beneath her dress, you don't, you, her dress goes to the floor, but you don't see her taking any steps. It's like that ballet dance. Nice. Um, and she, she sort of glides into the parlor uh, and walks up near Diablo and then sort of turns and you guys go ahead and roll uh, empathy observation. Okay. Empathy. I got the dice. Observation. Today. So you get to test if they are friendly or if they will betray you. 
Well, they're not friendly. They spilled in my purse. Uh, oh. <laughs> so we will find them in a second and roll other things because I need more than two anyway. Two sixes. Two. Oh, okay. Uh, you see her like she subtly reaches across to one of the other people and slips a card in like a jacket pocket, right? And you see her do this a couple of times, mm -hmm. right? Um, and she's making her way around the room. Like, she's clearly on the schmooze train, right? Like, she is more interested in talking to everyone else there than mourning Diablo. Three right? sixes. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So you both see this happen. Uh, with the extra success, you can see that one she tried to, like, put in a pocket, but the pocket was, like, if if you buy a jacket and you don't know what you're doing and you don't cut the pocket open, so yep. it's still sewn shut. And uh, uh, she clearly, like, hit that and thought it went into the pocket, but it slipped down and landed on a seat in the parlor. Yeah, I will grab that. Sure. Um, I would like to use my conjuring tricks to oh. replace the card in her hand with a snake. <laughs> okay. This is not the time to be doing that, lady. <laughs> <laughs> okay. All right. Um uh let's uh let's see. Uh I, I don't I don't know what the role is for your conjuring tricks. What is it? Um I think it's stealth. Sure. That yeah. absolutely makes sense. Okay. Uh, so stealth and precision. Hopefully this isn't too many dice. Let's find out. Now, is it a harmless snake or is it a venomous snake that you're planning to deposit? <laughs> um, evens, it's harmless. Odds, it's venomous. Ooh, 50-50. Yeah. <laughs> okay, <laughs> okay, it's harmless. I got two successes. All right, very good. With your second success, you could make it a snake species that looks like it's not harmless. <laughs> like oh, the, yeah, like a, a, uh, like uh, a false what? cobra or something. I know yeah, yeah. that rhyme. Or, I don't know the name. I'm like, red next to black. That's fine. Right, right, yeah. <laughs> yeah. One of those. That's exactly what I was thinking. Yeah, I love that, yes. Thinking back to watching Danger Bay as a kid. <laughs> They had a whole episode about that snake. It was it was a bizarre show. Like Canadian island living biologist family going on adventures. Ooh. But, but uh um Okay. So you like sweep in sort of behind her as she's reaching for someone else, and suddenly she is pressing a snake up against a gentleman. Uh, who immediately loses his mind is like what? Uh, and like jumps back, knocks over a table, right? So like a a vase falls. It doesn't break. It falls and just gushes water out all over several other people. Uh, who then are like, Bleh! you know, every like there's a whole situation over there, and she's just. She like looks down at her hand and sees the snake and go, like you can see her freak out momentarily, but then she kind of just shakes her hand a couple of times and the snake. But hang on, let me try something. Okay, it's not quite as cool as I thought it was gonna be. So she shakes her hand a couple of times and the snake looks like it starts to evaporate for a second. And then it lands on the floor. Like you, you like in the space between her hand and the floor, it looks like it becomes a ghost snake for a moment and then hits the floor and it's the snake again. Um, and then she's like, oh, excuse me. And she bails, right? Like she makes for the door, unless you're going to try and stop her. As she should. No. Okay. Um, yeah. Yeah. Who is networking at uh, Diablo's? Uh, who's networking at Diablo's wake? And uh, Sersha will look at the card. Well, you have the card. <laughs> the do. card. The, the card says, and it's super tacky and it's delightful. The mistress of Charybdis. 
but mistress is spelled with a Y, so it matches Charybdis with a Y. Um, Tacky. Tacky. And uh, apparently she is, she is a soothsayer from Wales. <gasps> oh. Oh. And she, she Bitch. is, you're not quite <laughs> sure what she was telling people. Like, do you want to ask anybody specifically or... Like there's still people here that you saw get cards. Do you want to talk to them, or are you just gonna keep the card and figure it out? Oh no, we're gonna talk to them. I want to again. Who's networking at a funeral? I know who now. You're trying to steal my gig. <laughs> <laughs> Ooh, should have been a venomous thing. <laughs> what a so, weird uh, moment. <laughs> so, uh, uh, the back of the card. It has like it's like a little tale of like she was born near a small village that was known for having a whirlpool and when she was young she fell into the whirlpool and couldn't get out but she was saved and ever since she's been able to to converse with the spirits and predict the future and you know all of the the general spiritualist things if i didn't think that she was up to no good i would think she would be like us but also preying on people at a funeral oh the poor taste of it all you wouldn't have handing that, out cards you? never <laughs> you just oh. casually drop it in conversation of course <laughs> listen i would do something interesting like raise the dead and let them speak to everybody not hand out my cards Ooh, i would rather I can produce see. a spirit you don't have to advertise is that i i don't know that i want to see what diablo would do what diablo's like after he dies it's a lot to go through he's already been through a lot though I can't imagine it'll make him any weirder. Perhaps two wrongs will cancel each other out. I do him some good. Uh, so you, um, as you guys finish this little conversation, you hear outside, it apparently has begun to have a light rain, right? Because you start to hear water splashing on the cobblestones of the street. And, uh, you hear like several people outside the door that kind of like clearly there's some kind of a little minor commotion out there, right? And you hear like the the thump step step of someone walking with like purpose and with a cane, right? And comes up the steps and then when you get back over to the to the uh, parlor entrance where you can kind of see out the door, you see that there is a, this woman that has approached the door and she's got this polished white cane that she has pushed through the doorway and put down on the first tile. And on either side of her, sitting now on the front step of the house, are two, they look almost like Dobermans that are sitting and they're like facing the street. And if anybody else tries to walk up the steps behind her, and there's still a few people that haven't come in yet, uh, the dogs both look at them and growl. Uh, and then you see her and it, almost with a deliberate effort, she takes another step forward and walks through the door and then she takes a big breath and steps in and she's in the full black like mourners dress and hat with the black veil and the whole thing and she she slowly starts making her way over to the parlor and Hawkins he he is very tense, but he is not making to stop her in any way. Um, she gets over into the parlor and walks up to the table 
where Diablo is is laying, and she reaches out with the cane and whacks the side of the table three times, like hard, like very loudly, raps on the table. <laughs> Excuse me. <laughs> you know how I mentioned like drowning on my own saliva? Sometimes I do that. No. Ugh. Excuse me. Uh so she she raps on the table three times and then she says Stop soaking up all this attention, Mijo. Get up. <laughs> and she puts her cane back down and takes a couple of steps back from the table. I guess I will get up because Mama told me to. Yep, uh, Diablo will just uh, sit up and brush his pants. Uh, thank you, everyone, for coming. And, like, That's immediately, all. like, three people in the crowd, like, faint, right? <laughs> like, there's a couple, that like, one sense. person just lets out, like, a wail of, like, terror and runs out of the room. Several people, like, make the catch. Like, uh, you know, the, the first person to faint is this gentleman that was standing there. Like, if you've ever seen somebody that doesn't know not to lock your knees if you're standing up straight for too long... Like, and just he just keels over, and somebody catches him. Like, ah, what am I supposed to do now? Like, clearly they were about to start running out of the room too, but now they're holding someone, and they don't know what to do. And yeah, it's just a whole it's chaos it has erupted around the room. John is looking at Diablo very proudly. Good. I have so many follow up questions. I'm <clears throat> nope, I don't know where to start. Uh, I have one question. Um Mom Mama, why are you alive? I thought you were very much dead. Well, you did your work, left me in a way, but you were a small boy. You weren't as big an appetite as you are now, so you left enough for me to finish. Now, your father didn't make it, but... I managed to get myself back to health. And I see you've grown into a healthy young man, too. Oh. <laughs> Thanks. I, uh... Life's been good so far, so... And, uh, yeah. uh... And, like, she reaches out to, like, pat you on the arm now that you're sitting up. Um, and you can see, like, up her arm there's like a bunch of scarring, right? Like uh, life has been good for you, Ma. Well, I travel now. Uh -huh. I get to see many places. And when I heard that my boy may have died, I just knew I had to come. Uh, did you want to meet my, uh, uh, my employer? Um, this is Sean. Um, Ooh. and then that over there is a, uh, see he and it kind of points over in her. And she, she nods at both of you. You still don't see her face because she's still wearing like this full veil. That seems fair. Uh. Did you want to stay for dinner? I can make meatloaf for... Maybe we can go out to eat. No, no. I, I had a large meal before coming. Okay. But I'm glad uh, you're yeah. all right. I just knew that one little vason wouldn't slow down my boy. Thanks, Mama. I, uh, I really appreciate that. Um, 
I, I don't know what to say or do now. Uh, Lady Sean, what do you what do you think? What what should we do or say? It's very nice to meet you, Mrs. And she'll like hold out her hand uh, to handshake. I don't know. <laughs> uh, just... I don't she, know what she... her. She's like Mrs. Diablo. Like that's not her name. Well, uh, Diablo, your last name is still Amon, right? Amon. Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. So, oh, yeah. I would know that then, uh, Mrs. Amon. Yeah. It's lovely to meet you. And she she reaches out and takes your hand, and like does the like older lady like hand caress right like if you've mm -hmm. ever like reached out to shake someone's hand and they're not a handshaker and they kind of give you the like oh i've taken your hand and now i'll kind of like do the thumb <laughs> rub on the back of your hand and, and kind of like a basic shake sort of a thing hmm. and she goes well i'm glad you're treating my boy right he is a constant surprise and inspiration does he does he still dream oh yes Hmm. He doesn't scream as much as he used to, but uh, there's still oh. quite a lot of dreams. Well, and she kind of looks over and she nods at Diablo and goes, well, perhaps you found a place you feel is safe then. Hmm? Uh, yeah, Lady Sean is uh, more than satisfactory in terms of a traveling uh, partner. We share the same room. Um, I know a lot about her. Um, she has nice hair. Well, if uh, if you ever need help traveling, just use this. And she she reaches out, and she's holding. It's it looks. It looks almost like a coin, but it's like polished white. Right? And she, she holds it out to Sean. And she oh, says, okay. here, if if you ever need help getting somewhere and you're in a desperate way, use this and, and I will come help. Oh, I'm much obliged. Thank you very much. I appreciate it. And if you take it from her, it's it's about the size of like the Kennedy half dollar coin, you know? Um, and one side is very flash, like very uh, um, flat and polished. The other side is like still very rough and hasn't been worked at all. And it looks like a piece of a jawbone. Right? Like, it has that little angle bit right here. Mm -hmm. And she hands it to you and says, I'll know if you if you go to use it. Very well. And Sean will take it and put it in a safe pocket. And then she says, you, you take care of him now. I'll okay. be in town for a while. There's some work to do. Perhaps I will come and visit if I get a little peckish. Yeah, um, see, he is amazing on on that front. Um, oh, would what definitely front? recommend. Uh, I, um, uh, Don't you, be rude, see, he. This is my mom. <laughs> no, I'm I'm very. Uh, and Sarah just sort of like hands. Give, like also shakes uh, his uh, her hand in the same like kind of half like on autopilot. Like, yep, mm -hmm. you, this is what you do when you meet people you're supposed to be polite to. Uh, but she's sort of untangling everything in her. Ah, uh, are uh, hmm. It's good to see you. To meet you. Your son is brave <laughs> yes yes he is he is has... she is there a way to tell us someone's vasen just like by looking <laughs> are you sneezing am uh, i sneezing lick it it's the only way <laughs> just get a good whiff of this woman 
<laughs> um, don't be smelling my mom. That's weird. So weird. <laughs> so weird moment uh, all around. See, first it was I'm gonna smell someone's stuff while they're not around, and yeah, now I don't want to. Now it's progressed her, but... to I'm just gonna straight smell this lady that has I, come into our I home. I don't want to, but I'm so confused. Well, if, uh, you, if you want to take a whiff, she is not putting out enough that it has triggered anything for you. I will say that. That's if you what wanna, I assumed. Like, if you want to get a real breath of her, <laughs> Snort you'll have mama. to like, like snip, step in close, and you can do it subtly, but you'll still have to get closer than a handshake. You know, I think I'm good. Sometimes people are just strange. Uh, but I'll, I'll, uh, shake her hand, introduce myself, and also just, I, Clara and Sersha do not have the words to ask the questions that need to be asked, so okay. we are I going mean... to both take the uh, route, of, route of tact and just I mean, like, I'm, step back. I'm happy to crowdsource what you want to try and find <laughs> out here. Like, if if you're uh, having part, trouble figuring out what you want to do, like, give I me a general direction, first, and I can. The first, like, the first very rude question Sersha has is, "How did you make Diablo? <laughs> like, oh, how is a, Diablo? I mean, can we talk about that on Twitch? No, it's <laughs> like, it's it's more of a why is Diablo? Because Sersha <laughs> actually doesn't know Diablo's secret." I don't sure. think any of us actually do. Uh, yeah. Again, it just seems like a weird thing to ask. I, I mean, also, you could ask. Uh, but Diablo, how are you alive? I didn't want to die. Seemed reasonable. Yeah, the uh, the Amans have always been pretty passionate about the things we want, and my like I wanted to to say um, I've fallen in love um, with a uh, individual who also likes uh, the same things I do. We share a lot of common interests, um, and and yeah, I I I'm, I came back so I could. Tell tell her how I feel. As long as you're not the second coming, I am thankful you're here, I think. And uh, <laughs> Diablo's mom kind of chuckles at you saying that and goes, no, 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 no. He is a mite different, but he's, he's him. No intervention from above or below. I I think that's okay. I there's a lot to unpack here. I was somewhat under the impression that Diablo was an orphan. Well, he he lived as such for quite some time. It took me a while to regain my strength. And then I found my way into my current efforts. So it took me even longer to find that he had survived. Yeah. Re regain strength from a sickness? Well, from, from injuries. From injuries. Ah. It was I think a very... It's a Okay, Ma. Um, see, he, I think, should know the truth. Oh, it's okay. oh I hate this. Uh, Sersha turns to, uh, does the, uh, hold one moment and uh, walks to the bar and grabs a, oh, sorry. Uh, we had <laughs> interference from furry companions. Take a spot, Catherine. Uh, but she grabs a, uh, uh, she fills a tumbler of whiskey, not like a couple fingers, like a whole hand. <laughs> there you go. I think I'm going to need this. Continue. A mini bus of whiskey. There you go. 
so uh she goes I, are are you sure mijo i i i wouldn't want to bother your friends no i think um oh yeah i think it's okay i mean worst case uh since you're here we'll deal with it uh in the appropriate manner if it freaks them out too much but fair enough fair enough and she she kind of reaches up and she pulls back her veil um and you can see that like the this lower third of her face is just exposed bone right um and you know scarring all down to the neckline where her dress starts um and she she says i uh we we were not wealthy people and times were exceptionally hard and my boy diablo he he was starving we all were and and he made the choice to survive at the expense of his father and I. But I don't blame him. It was our situation. But luckily, he left enough that I was able to gain some nourishment myself and gain some strength before I managed to get myself up and get back out and I I met my friends and she gestures out the front door where you see the dog sitting and uh, and they helped me get to the next town and uh, and from there I've, I've been traveling and gaining more strength as I've gone. But uh, he he used us so that he could live. You know, uh, typical Saoirse grown up story. Shoots a half pint of whiskey. <laughs> I don't know what I expected. Excuse me. And uh, heads back to get more. But now he says that you help make sure he's fed well so I'm in your debt as well my advice would be make sure that he doesn't have to go hungry again and she chuckles to herself <laughs> that's a good joke ma we do our best uh, Mrs. Zaman it sounds like you've been uh, through quite a lot um, if you yes. ever need someone to talk to about it i hope you'd feel free to call on myself as a friend oh well that's very kind very kind i uh making it through the war on the continent was hard but it let me get here so i am appreciative And she kind of sighs to herself a little bit, and then she turns around and, like, does the, like, big mom hug on Diablo. Like, the, the big, like, just let Aww. me engulf my kid in a way that, like, even after a person's grown and they get the big mom hug, like, it feels like you're tiny again. And you're like, how is this possible? I'm actually physically larger than you still. But... Somehow I have become enfolded back to being six years old uh, and just throws out this big hug and kind of then turns and goes, I shall make sure to stop by before I leave. Please do my, uh, if I find, uh, if I find her again, I'd, I'd like your approval. Um, so oh, it's, it's quite serious then. 
Yeah. Like I said, we both have the same likes and dislikes. I haven't really met anyone else. Um, like and her. she kind of so. like she kind of looks at the 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 still few people that her dogs are keeping away from coming inside, and she's like, <laughs> "It seems like you had a fair number of well wishers." Uh, yeah, I've lived a pretty vibrant life, I would say. I've tried to experience everything um, as much as possible. So, yeah, I think I, if I were to die, I think I would die satisfied knowing that I did everything I could do and left no enemy uh, alive. Oh, good. And she kind of turns and she takes another step and like again when her cane hits the ground it resonates oddly right like you you are in London right there's a fair number of people that use canes just for fashion but this it sort of uh it sort of is like uh you know those rain sticks where it's it's that I think it's a cactus, but it has the little seeds inside, and they sell them at roadside shops all through the southwest. Mm -hmm. And if you turn it over, it sounds like all these little pebbles and rocks and seeds or whatever are falling inside. It's almost like if you were using one of those, and every step it kind of has a shake to it. Um, and uh, she uh, she gets back over to the door, and she nods to Hawkins who nods back at her, and uh, she says, I, I don't think there'll be any more well-wishers today. And he again nods at her, and she steps back out on the porch and reaches out with her not cane-holding hand and pets the one dog, and then she tosses the cane to the Aww. other hand, pets the other dog, and they walk down the, the first few steps out into the rain, right? And... Uh, they take a few steps towards the street and when she gets to the street she just kind of that last step that would take her into the street itself like off the curb she just kind of fades out like it's almost like the raindrops begin to erase her right that's the way it looks uh so like as the rain is falling it's like each drop is taking out that line of pixels sort of, that just make up your view of her. And then there's not even a splash in the puddle at the curb. Oh, and both dogs go, too. Well, um, thank you, everyone else. Um, if you would like to converse with me or interact with me, um, I would say leave your card, and I will find you uh, within a day, um, I don't think. Uh, these, this is an appropriate place for us to have some of our discussions, uh, especially, uh, yep. That's all I have to say. Thank you. And you see the couple of people that were still out there that are like, oddly, like it's a combination of disappointed and like super excited because Diablo came to the door and it's like, bye everybody. I'm not dead. Yeah. Uh, so like they don't know where their emotional chart should be pointed at all. They're just like, ah, you know, if uh, if a nurse came with that pain chart of like ten is the worst you've ever felt and one is the best you've ever felt, like they're both ten and one simultaneously, and they don't know what to do with that. <laughs> so several of them just wander off into the rain, and like you know, a couple of people that were crying are now like giggling to themselves and like skipping through the puddles. And it's Aww. just a, it's a weird scene. Uh, he'll but take then, a look outside to see if Patricia ever showed up. Uh, you, you did not see her or sense her. Here. Okay. All right. Were you just laying here the whole time or did you just come back? Yeah. All right. Uh, 
I was in and out. I found I found myself briefly what felt like the sixth circle of hell. Um, such creatures were screaming at me uh, repeatedly while they ripped out my flesh and my eyes, putting them back into me and then taunting me. Uh, eventually, I grew tired of it and I uh, started climbing the stairs up. And that's kind of how I got here. Uh, yep. All right. This is a thing that has happened. <laughs> and Hawkins, like, closes the door slowly behind you uh, as soon as you come back in, right? Um, and then he goes, I, uh, I suppose I will begin to clean up. I will leave the buffet in case any of you are feeling hungry. I would very much like some meat. I find myself peckish, and he stares at Sihi. Uh, I'm going to, uh, I think Sersha, if she hasn't already in the time between, uh, in the time as we were getting ready for the wake, I think Sersha's going to see if there's a church nearby <laughs> and oh, yeah, just I mean deal with whatever is happening. Like, yeah, it's just an old sit. European city. There's going to be churches. Yeah, I think Search is just, well, yeah, Search is just going to find unless, a church. Unless you're specifically <laughs> looking for a, a very specific denomination. Uh, she, I, I, she'd probably look for a Catholic church, but uh, otherwise, uh, she just, I think, wants a place that isn't Rose House right now. Income. Nothing major, just like I, I don't, nothing terribly interesting. Just to be, just to be with the fact that the person she thought was dead and also like watched die, just sort of got up, and now we have to figure out if his mom is also Vossen. Sure, but uh, yeah, you can go and and spend some time quietly thinking over life, the universe, and everything. <laughs> Trying to explain to a priest in confession what happened. Like, okay, <laughs> hold on. <laughs> yeah, yeah. There's no, she doesn't need to confess. She just needs to sit in a space <laughs> that feels safe. <laughs> sure. I'll, um, I think, uh, I'll look to Lady Sean. I'll like, uh, may I have this evening off? Course. I think your day of death uh, should definitely be an off day. That's cool. Thank you. You're better than some of the other people I've worked with. I would hope so. Uh, and just like Ryan Gosling in uh, The Notebook, he's going to go out with like uh, his white t-shirt in the rain uh, soaked uh, to try to find Patricia. Uh, so I, I don't think there's anything we have to roll for your church time. Unless, do you have any conditions? Like, do you have any mental conditions? Uh, the only, I think I ended with exhausted, so I think we're okay, uh, yeah. just because I had a nice nap. No, I don't think I took any damage last game. Gotcha. Okay. Uh, yeah. just, like, if you had any mental conditions, going to spend time talking with a priest and relax, like, meditating in a church would definitely help. That's, yeah. That's, it's um, also just good knowledge to know for later when things come after us and we've seen stuff walk in to Rose House. <laughs> Yay. Not without some difficulty. Hashtag but life. it happened and we saw it happen. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think um, Sean will probably grab a bite to eat from the... Uh, the banquet and then retire to the uh, library to research um, what the fuck Diablo's mom probably is. <laughs> okay. It's just a normal mom. Don't your moms do that? I don't know. Every mom gives out jawbone tokens. Cool. Yeah. Like, totally. <laughs> yeah, Perfectly normal. It's, it's, normal it's like the female version of Werther's Originals, right? <laughs> like, yeah. I mean... Get your jawbone. 
I got teeth in here. Uh, <laughs> you want bones? I got bones. Yeah, you want Mom, bones? Mom, I got a molar. Uh, of, I was going to say, of the, uh, of the fa- a- AFAB people on this, in this uh, game. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm just saying. I count That's... five skulls and a spine. I have a bag of teeth behind me. <laughs> are they yours? Two of them are. Okay. I always, I always thought that 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 policy of like parents that tried to keep all their kids' baby teeth, and then they even sold those little like collector things of them. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. And like, like, you'd like, like, you like make a full set of the kids' baby teeth and put it in there and like keep it to give to them someday. I was always like, what is this policy? Man, <laughs> I uh, wish I had that. <laughs> right. Uh, I'm making an. I'm making a rhythm instrument, and I need. I wanted teeth. I Ooh. don't have a better explanation for why I have this. <laughs> you don't need one. You're allowed. I'm just. I'm just. I wasn't. I wasn't fishing for whys. I was just saying that. <laughs> it's not for us. Those to little ask why. collectible cases were always the part that was weird for me. I was like, oh, no, I'm not going to be bothering with that. I do. I do draw the line at the live, laugh, love style collectible case. Oh, but those are great. I just made jewelry out of my wisdom teeth. Ooh. Like you do. Mine mine had to be shattered before they were removed from my jaw, so there wasn't any leavings for me. (laughs) You should get, like, a little baby tooth, like, vase and uh, put your powdered teeth in there. Tooth dust. It's got to be good Mm. for something. Uh-huh. Sure, sure. You could snort I'm, that. I'm fairly sure the Tooth Fairy is facing. So, <laughs> I, I'm 99.9 percent sure the Tooth Fairy. Is only facing. if, only if uh, it's done by the Rock. It's the only, <laughs> only one I recognize. Okay. The true Tooth Fairy. Mm-hmm. I, oh, I actually, the the movie that I watched with my kids that I very much liked was that. What the heck was the movie with Jack Frost and? Rise of the Guardians. It's yes. excellent. Do not read the uh, books. They're yeah. weirdly Orientalist. <laughs> oh. oh, that's a shame. But the movie I, I'm was sad. It's very really cool. Yeah. The um uh yeah. I, I liked it because it had like it was so Alec, good. Alec Baldwin as like slightly Slavic Santa. And yeah, it was great. Big Eastern European Santa. Yeah, I'm here for it. I loved his. Uh, I like. I love those tattoos. It, listen, it's it's fun. It's character a perfect design. movie. Yeah, it, it's yeah. the best Christmas movie. <laughs> All right, back on track. Uh, why don't we do uh, Diablo's investigation of London in the rain uh, to see if he can pick up on any trails? And I would do anything for you. <laughs> So, uh, what's your what's your plan? Are you just gonna wander aimlessly and hope, or? Yeah, I mean, I think okay. love carries us to beautiful and amazing yeah. places. Uh, and love lifts you up like... where you belong. Exactly. <laughs> um, you know, like a pig on a spit roast. Um, and so yeah, he's just gonna be out there, be like Patricia, in like his like soaking white wet t shirt. Uh, looking like a cannibal Ryan Gosling. Like a, uh, like a weird wet version of Marlon Brando, right? Yeah, <laughs> just I'll take it. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I mean, that's great. There's nothing wrong with that at all. So, uh, let's do. I'm trying to think what just would be the luck of love. Uh, why don't you do... If I bite Seehe, will I get a bonus? I don't bite me. think so. Okay. But it won't hurt, though, right? Like, I mean, it won't, it won't hurt, hurt you. Okay. I will punch you with my, <laughs> well, like, might... zero in physique. <laughs> my two physique. I will punch you. I take what? pugilist just for this. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, whack. What about... 
uh, what about empathy inspiration? Let's try that. AKA the Ryan Gosling uh, stat. Yeah. All right. Put on your scorpion jacket and let's do this. Oh, God, yes. Okay, that will be four dice. Not too bad. Not too bad. One, one success. Okay. Uh, so you you spend like hours, right? You you are just walking around, and the rain has turned cold, but it doesn't seem to affect you, right? You're just in this haze of like I have to find my love, uh, and. You know, you're passing by h- homes and apartments where, like, you see scenes. It's almost like British Norman Rockwell paintings as you're looking through windows. You see, like, there's a happy family sitting down to have dinner. And then there's, uh, like, two people that are sitting next to the radio and listening to some kind of a program. And they're hugging each other and laughing. Uh, then there's... Uh, you know, there's a, a a young woman that's sitting in a window and she's drinking a glass of wine and writing in in a journal of some kind. And like, it's all these portraits of, of charming things as you're walking around. But I think that only, I mean, it's your character, but I don't know if that would give you a sense of like loss, right? I, I think <laughs> it does. Ki- like That's kind of what I'm trying to pr- portray. Yeah, he, you know, he wants to settle down. Like, maybe he can have a life outside of this. You know, he imagines, like, um, a nice, like, uh, maybe, like, a week-old sea, uh, bottle of Sihi, um, and just kind of, like, across the table is Patricia, and, like, um, maybe there's parts of Sihi in the fridge, and we're, like, you know, we're talking about like, are we going to do meatloaf this week, or you know, or is it more like a steak type of dinner? And you know, little kids running around and stuff, um, breaking the wishbone, and right. you know, just like a you know, beautiful family. All right, I think, you know, a couple of times you've kind of mournfully yelled out for Patricia, and like, uh, sometimes it's been ignored. A couple of other times, like, someone has leaned out a window and been like, Oi! Shut up down there! You know, like, I'm trying to sleep! Patricia doesn't live here! Like, uh, one time was like, uh, You better not be trying to talk to my wife! (laughs) Like, Get back in the house, Patricia! And, like, some woman was coming out on the front porch, like, (gasps) Like, all excited that someone has come in the rain. Like, in the most romantic say-anything fashion. Yeah, I'll be like, uh, not not today, Patricia. I'll see you next week. Oh. And and she was like, I heard you were dead, and goes back in the house. I know. <laughs> like, yeah. uh, but eventually you come across, uh, like you just you, you feel like you can't walk any farther, right? You you feel like you have literally walked every street in London at this point, and you kind of get to. Uh, the gate outside a house and laying there on the ground with the ink running is an evening edition of the paper, right? Uh, It is soaked through, but you can see what the headline says. And it says, hold on. Divorce at the duchy. He'll start reading it. And sure. Uh, and it's a little hard to make out, but clearly it says that the Duke of Norfolk is planning to separate from his wife. Oh. I.e. the Duke, the tall man that you met. Yeah. Did we ever see his wife? No. I wonder why. He's going to follow love. He's going to follow love where it takes him. But first, he needs his friends, particularly Lady Sean. See, he can come or go. Um, but Lady Sean, definitely. But sure, you can you can steal their newspaper and head back to Rose House. That's fine. Yeah, can I? Uh, is the church nearby? 
Uh, yeah. I mean, there's got to be some. Because I, I, I will nearby. be checking for Sihi because I I need her too. Sure. Uh, how long were you planning to stay at the church? I don't know. Uh, just kind of kill the rest of the evening. But if. Uh, but not like down. all night. Like not into the no, wee no, hours. No, 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 no. Okay. So she's probably gone back to Rose's house by now. Like, you get to the church and there's a there you know there's a ring bell kind of a situation. Like the church is locked; they don't just let people in all night. But mm-hmm. there's a bell that you can ring that would probably summon someone from the rectory, kind of like kind of thing. Sure, sure. And then eventually the door you hear this bolt kachunk and the door opens and there's this older priest that's that's standing there and he's just like he's he's clearly just buttoning the collar of his shirt he goes yes yes it is quite late there was was there a woman here about yay high um yeah i think and her name's he, he he connects the dots right cuz <laughs> Sersha gave him like a rundown of all this weirdness and is like Oh, you're him. Oh, you okay? Yes, oh, yes. Wait, I know who wait, you were talking you say about. Him. What do you mean? Oh, I I spoke with a, a woman today, this evening about um about your situation that that your mother had come to visit situation. and and that it was it was a very awkward gathering at your home. It was lovely. Yes, yes, an outpouring of love. And clearly he's, like, I don't know if you'd pick up on this, but he is clearly doing the, like, I'm going to agree with you because I don't want to face crazy at four in the morning. Like, mm-hmm. We've all been there. Yeah, like, I just, please, uh, <laughs> uh, I, can I help you? or, or But no, no one's here still. Uh, it is quite late. Okay. And you treat her right? Well, of course. You tell As her any that other God's person... not real? Well, now. I challenge you to prove it. I don't think we have enough time tonight for me to prove it to you. You're right. Far smarter people than you or I have been trying to prove or disprove for a very long time. And that's why we must have faith in a month's time, I think I'll be ready. And then I could show you what I've seen. Well, I welcome your evidence. Excellent. Me too. And All he right, begins to close the door. Good evening. Be safe in the rain. You'll draw your death of cold. Oh. Again. Okay. Yeah. That's... <laughs> and then he okay. closes and locks the door. It's a nice guy. Yeah, I'm going to go straight for see his room. Okay. Uh, as you're walking back, let's flash back to Sean in the library <laughs> attempting to investigate uh, what kind of visitor your mother may have been. Yeah, so, I mean, uh, I feel like I have a few things to cross-reference. In yeah, absolutely, absolutely. So go ahead for like a logic investigation or logic learning. All right, let's give it a try. Logic. Let's go with investigation since I just added something to that. Come on, dice. No successes. None. Okay. I got two fives out of. But no sixes. Rude. At least it's not a door. Can't fight not back. Not a door. <laughs> you have wounded yourself in the library. <laughs> no. Uh, you um, you don't find. Uh, here's what you do find in the process of investigating. You're pretty sure that those two dogs are what are referred to as black dogs. Okay. They were. Uh. And their behavior suggests that they have uh, 
they generally are known for escorting travelers and keeping people with ill intent away from and protecting travelers. But they are not docile creatures. Uh, and they, their solution to some, like a highwayman, for example, uh, would be to tear them apart, right? They're, 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 anybody that tries to do ill to a traveler under their protection or who veers off the road in places they shouldn't would be a swift and brutal demise. So they're good boys. Got it. Yes. But as to like, there's, you don't find anything that's like someone that keeps them as pet, like, yeah, you don't find anything like that. You don't make a connection to what. Okay. Or anything like that. Clearly I'm dead. I'm sure. What type of. I mean, she seemed alive. Like she didn't have the power of undeath. Hmm. Okay. Uh, she just looked like she'd been. Severely wounded. And recovered. And I mean, like, it's the 20s, so it's not like there's a lot of plastic surgery. True. Or, or skin grafts or anything like that to help recover in that way. That is a good point. Uh, you can push your roll if you want, but you run the risk of something yeah. bad happening. Since we're not actually actively investigating her and it's more my own curiosity, I'm not going to push it on this one. Very good. That makes a lot of sense to me. But that's fine. Um, yeah. Is there anything anybody else wants to get done tonight? Other than the return of Diablo to wake up Saoirse at 4 a.m.? Okay. Not, not for me. So, uh, Diablo, you get back to the house, uh, carrying your newspaper, uh, and you are soaked and cold. I, I mean, I don't know if it bothers you at all, but it's, it's, you know, London rain, so it's not a warm, tropical, enjoyable yeah. sprinkle. So you, uh, you get back into the house and Hawkins opens the door as you walk up and says, welcome home, sir. Oh, thank you. Hawkins, I really appreciate that. Uh, is Cersei here? Uh, yes. Uh, and then I don't know where Cersei would be. Is there a sitting room? Uh, I think Cersei's, as usual, in the library, asleep somewhere under a book. Okay. Uh, she has maybe slept in her bed once. <laughs> yes, she is in the library, sir. So. Excellent. He'll go to the library um, and gently wake up uh, Cersei by placing his fingertips on either side of her eyelashes and slowly parting the eyelids apart. Um, uh, can I kick him? <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. You sure can. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> what, what is that? Is it physics? Uh, physique plus, uh, what? Uh, well, it's just forced. Oh, shit. <laughs> because, because you're just, uh, now, is the intent to, like, kick, like, whap, get away from me? Or is it, like, a shove? Uh, <laughs> like, the intent is that someone just, like, assaulted me in my sleep, and <laughs> I'm attempting to make that stop happening. But Isn't I think how people wake each other up nowadays, as know. as established by uh, Sersha's, would I don't even think she would have taken off her shoes and she got it like into the house. I think she's like, oh, I'll just grab a book, read a little bit, and then I'll go upstairs and go to sleep, and didn't make it to that last step. Sure. So I think like little you know nineteen twenties you know well made saddle shoe to the face. <laughs> Yeah, okay. So, yeah, uh, force physique. Cool. Oh, now I roll well. That's two successes. Oh, my <laughs> God. It's gonna get, I'm going to die again. There, there we go. <laughs> Back in hell. They'll be like, no. how did it happen? I got kicked in the face. 
we just sent you back up there, really. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> she doesn't uh, mean it, but you did just grab her face. <laughs> okay. But, like, was your intent to damage, is the question. Again, uh, the intent was make whatever's happening stop happening. So, okay. okay. So like, it get, like you act, startled her. It's the like. It's it doesn't the reflex. have to go, inflict no, the you. damage. <laughs> yeah. yeah. It's a no thank you smack. It's a no thank you smack, except with but, a foot. But clearly, it's enough to like propel Diablo back a step, unless yeah. you want to resist. Like it no, could turn no. into a, to a whole <laughs> fight if you want. But no, I, I didn't I like, get that. That was the intention. I like <laughs> see he. I so, need her for my mission of love. Uh huh. So there you go. You are. And just you like are both awake. And she just she just starts swearing. Like it's if you speak any other languages, you might recognize them. But a lot like she starts just swearing. Yeah, just Spanish. No, yeah. You really have no idea what she's saying then. Uh, good morning to you as well. Um... Diablo, why? Are, why are you touching my face? I'm sorry, by the way. Why are you touching my face at 4 a.m.? I wanted to wake you in the most gentlest way that I could. Uh, I, I think, thank, thank you. Uh, if you would like to do that in the future, you could just call out, make a sound, mm. tap on the shoulder. Mm. Is this, is there something that you need? Yes, and he'll throw down the newspaper. Love brought me to this and I, I wanna go to that house now. I was hoping you'd join me, uh, Lady Sean as well. Other than proving the Duke is Anglican, what do you want from this? I hope that this divorcee is actually Patricia and she's taking the first steps to to find me again. You think that Patricia was married to the Duke? Yes. Um, what, uh, just throwing this out there because it's 4 a.m. and I'm humoring you because you just died. And for some reason, I think I like you as a person. Thank you. Uh, I enjoy your company too. I'm sure you do. Uh, is it possible that the temptress Vasin, who replaces women and eats them, is not so much interested in in divorcing a high-powered individual, but perhaps ruining the marriage of of this high-powered individual, and then marrying him. I I can only tell you what my heart says. Go ahead, feel it. I'd rather not. He's telling me to go. Uh, Sersha, like, gives a full body sigh and you died and I respect that. You died for this thing. And I respect that as well. We can go to the Duke tomorrow. And perhaps your Patricia is there and we'll convince him not to marry Avasin. And I guess two birds with one stone. Thank you. No. Wonderful. Fist bump you. I'm gonna go take Lady, uh, I'm gonna tuck Lady Sean in, uh, but I look forward to seeing you again in the morning, alive and well. I can actually say I do, I, I, uh, the same for you. 
And uh, so she just turns over. She has not acknowledged she was not in her room and just like goes back to sleep. <laughs> Did you want me to take you to your room? Oh. Mm. It's bad for your back. I know right now you're young and you think you can do these things, but in about 10 years, you're going to find that these bad habits have a cost and one that you don't fully understand now. Uh, uh, I've gotten by this far. You know what? You died. <laughs> so eventually this excuse will run out, but you're getting the you died <laughs> pass. So yeah, Sersha gets up and heads up to her room. It's going to be the rest of the campaign. He's like, I, I died. Die. Yeah, okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, you get the I died pass for at least two weeks. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, so All she'll right. head up to her room with uh with uh Diablo. Cool. Uh yeah. Sleep is there anything I'll tuck else? in Lady Sean. Yeah. I uh, go back under the bed as my as I normally am. Um when you crawl underneath the bed, you see along the bottom, along the foot of the bed. You see that there's like a just a, a trail, like a fine trail of dust, like uh, right at the foot of the bed. Like a little pile, almost like salt, but you know, poured along right at the base of the bed. Hey, Lady Sean, did you mess with my bed? Muted. Oh. Why would I mess with your dead bed, Diablo? I don't know. It just look. There's this. Um. There's this stuff here, and he'll put a finger in it and like taste it. Uh, it tastes like you get it in your mouth, and it's obviously very, very dry, right? Um, but after it like rehydrates in your mouth a little bit, it tastes like marrow. Oh. Hmm. But what, uh, Lady Sean? Is there a reason why there's bone marrow underneath, uh, or in my sleeping area? Um. Well, if you didn't put it there, then I don't know. I don't usually keep my bone marrow under the bed. Where do you keep it? Wouldn't you like to know? I do. <laughs> I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, very much so she is not forthcoming <laughs> a lady never tells where the bone marrow is <laughs> alright yeah, I guess he'll just like go to sleep uh, maybe put the bone marrow in like a ziploc bag but like not Ziploc. Okay. So you want to sweep it up? Yeah, I'll, I'll sweep it up and. Okay. Yeah. Is it like in a line around the bed? It's in a line like a, a, at the foot of the bed. It doesn't seem okay. to go all the way around, but it's clearly purposely there. It's not like it accidentally was swept in that pattern or something, you know? For all that loose bone marrow dried that's floating yeah, around. I mean, I... yeah, we've all been to bed and breakfasts. They, they kind of do that sometimes. Sure. Sure. Uh, but no, uh, that is not... It's fine. If you would like to sweep it up and put it in a... Like, you could sweep it up into, like, a parchment, you know? Yeah. Uh, and I'll double check with... um. Uh, Hawkins to see if anyone went into my room or Herber? specifically my bed under Sean's room. Technically, it's my room, it's our room. You have your uh, own room. <laughs> uh, he are you like gonna leave the room and go ask him right now, or just like wait and talk to him in the morning? Uh, yeah, yeah. I'll ask him right now. Okay. I feel he like. goes. Sir, 
No, no one entered your room. However, there was some kind of a working uh, that happened. Uh, it felt beneficial, uh, you know, a protection, a, a blessing of some sort. Oh. So I did not see the need to intervene. Ah, oh, crap. Okay, and he'll try, <laughs> like, like start trying to put the bone marrow back where it was. He's like, oh, God. You can pour it back out in the line. It's fine. Yes. Yeah, like, oh, crap. Don't uh, touch my bone marrow, Sean. I've got Good my night. own. <laughs> I don't like it if it's dried. You know that. <laughs> <laughs> but, uh, yeah. So you, you pour it back out. It, it seems fine. Like, it doesn't feel like anything's messed up about it. Okay. But you go off to sleep and yeah. have a surprisingly restful night's sleep. Oh. I'd... Yeah, he'll probably wake up uh, nice, uh, peppy, and refreshed and get uh, Lady Sean like a lovely breakfast in bed, um, something special. Uh, probably just be in a, a chirper mood. Sure. Yeah. It's like, hell yeah. Today's gonna be a good day. Uh, but he do will let as... Lady Sean. Uh huh. Oh, do you as undead need to sleep anymore? <laughs> I don't know. Great question. I don't know if you need to. I know that you're like, if we do an examination on you. Like a, a physical, if you get a physical, you're like fine. Yeah. Uh, that's a good question. What, how does my body feel like different than it was? Uh, if anything, uh huh. I don't. Did you write down the what benefit you got from? Oh, uh, mm. on. I can find oh, it. Oh, my. Okay. I was so excited, I forgot to put it down. <laughs> it was called the Cause, Diablo. Because I have forgotten myself. So. Yeah, I know it was like undead. Um, and like Let's that's. See. Yeah, that was the result. Yeah. <laughs> but what type? So it's listed as living dead. You get a plus three to stealth. Ooh. Oh, that's right. Um, so you have become like preternaturally still, right? Like if you spend the mental focus to, I mean, like not as a, not as a game mechanic way, but like if you focus on it, you can completely stop your breathing. You can you. you can completely stop a heartbeat, but those systems still function. Yeah. Right. Um, but like you can, you know, you're that person, you can hold your hand out and there's no wiggle. Like, you know, every human in the world can only do this for so long, even the finest surgeons. Right. Uh, with, but you can just be a statue, right? Like you're one of those statue performers if you want to be. Oh, heck um, Yeah new line of work yeah uh so like just naturally though like uh you know you have you you have the ability now to just be in a place and almost blend in because you're so able to just be still and nobody notices because even it's almost like you're human like like if you know humans are really good at noticing human shaped things and it's almost like you're slightly not that anymore, so you're easy to miss. Yay! If that's what so you get. Yeah, I can. Uh, uh, I can uh, watch over Lady Sean uh, and ensure that I, I don't wake her. This is perfect. Sure. 
Well, yeah, a little peppy today. Maybe some like eggs with like cherry glaze and jelly with it. Nom 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 nom. There you go. Yeah. Uh, and we're we're going off. If that's okay, Lady Sean, I I want to see uh, if Patricia turns up, and I'll hand her the uh, uh, the newspaper, which is probably just like a mess by now. Could be mess. It's just like pulp. <laughs> yeah. Well, this does seem interesting. Um, if it does help find Patricia, then I'm all for it. But we're not going to hurt her, right? Uh, provided she's not trying to eat anyone. Okay. Okay. Trisha comes downstairs having actually slept in a bed and therefore pretty rested. <laughs> so, yeah. Okay. Let's go to the Dukes. Let's... I, I'm I have I have a feeling I know where Patricia is. I'm excited. Um do I look good? Is, is my breath smell okay? As fragrant as usual. Okay, Whew, just nervous, you know. Okay. Let's do this. All right, you guys head on out of the house. Um, you start to make your way. Are you planning to? No, it wasn't that far. That's right. We talked about that before. So you uh, you start making your way over to the Duke's home. Um, and you get, you know, a half a block down. And then on the outside of a garden wall, there's like a place where people have started to put up, uh, you know, um, Posters, put you know, mm -hmm. advertising posters, and there's a couple of you know lost pets and you know various things, but it's all over this wall, right? And there's a whole row, like a brand new row of poster after poster, that's that's this vortex, and then like font at the top that's, uh, come and see the mistress of Charybdis, uh, and like performances nightly uh at this a theater name that you, you don't recognize is that limited engagement that kind of stuff all over it mm. <gasps> what do you guys think i think it's going to be more limited than she'd like to think if she keeps going around <laughs> advertising herself at people's funerals <laughs> Is there a lot of competition between soothsayers? Not a soothsayer, I'm an occultist. Oh, I'm sorry. Is there, is there a lot of uh, competition between mediums? Generally, no. Um, so it's usually... as cutthroat as a TTRPG industry. <laughs> Most have the tact to stay out of other people's areas. Hmm. Is this not a union or anything? <laughs> Listen, no, probably should be. <laughs> I would love that. I need. I want to see an occultist union, right? Occultist local six six six. Oh, I'm sure making all of your that summonings shirt. are regulation. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I'm making that shirt of media. What would be the OSHA equivalent? <laughs> oh God, I think what uh, we are. I think we count as. Uh, we are the OSHA. Equivalent. We are OSHA. Oh, yes. Um. What? What? I'll note what the theater is. Sure. Is it like uh, a good theater, or is it like? Um. It's actually like a fairly nice theater. It's 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 like small box kind of size, right? It's not it's not like a giant palace of a theater or anything, but um, you know, it probably could seat a hundred people. Um. Hold on here. Uh, uh, 
It's called uh, the Jupiter Hall. Jupiter Hall. Okay. Note to self for future sabotage. Cool. What about sabotage? Why are we doing sabotage? This lady's trying to steal my job. Oh, well, it's true. it might she be is. my... Yeah, I don't... Yeah. Moving on your territory. Fair, I guess. We can't oh, both I... be Welsh. <laughs> like there can only be one Welsh. <laughs> There's a whole, I, I hate to tell you, this is a whole country of them. <laughs> Not anymore. Have you checked in on them recently? That's true. <laughs> Lady Sun's the last Welsh, and she made <laughs> damn sure of it. <laughs> it's like Highlander. Mm hmm. <laughs> I mean, follow up. I, uh, no, neither of us are linguists enough to be able to guess what the other one's secrets based on language alone. No. <laughs> <laughs> also, I've heard Welsh. It sounds it, like it starts just like it's probably sweet. It, it's probably Welsh. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but yeah, how's the Duke right. doing? So, uh, you guys get to the the residence, right? And there are like there are two big lorries parked out front, right? And there are footmen that are walking out with like trunks and artwork and sculpture and plants and all kinds of things that are being loaded up into these trucks. Um so it's it's hectic it is quite busy out front at the moment and there's a small gaggle of reporters that are sort of standing off to the side under the eye of of like an under butler right that's like kind of keeping them from charging up to the house but they're able there's a couple of people taking photographs of the folks coming out with all the stuff and loading up the trucks and all that kind of thing And if I remember correctly, the Duke is Adam's father, not yes. the not Christopher. No. Okay. This is Norfolk. That's Essex. Right. Presumably yeah. still a live son. Got it. Yes. Well, I mean, the one that was horribly traumatized, <laughs> but still alive. Yeah. All right. But we could see it like it's within reason that we could show up like to check on the poor traumatized Adam. That would make sense, sure. Yes. That is an excellent cover story. Let's do that. Yeah, yeah. that is. <laughs> we probably should have thought of a cover story yeah. before, but that sounds great. <laughs> that is the story we will give the butler. Mm -hmm. okay. uh, so you guys approach uh, the house um, and make your way up the steps because you're clearly not reporters or, or anything. So, well, the underbutler gives Sersha an eye as you walk by, but you're with two other people. So he's like, I guess it's all right. Um, but like then cool. you, uh, you guys get to the front door and are greeted by the butler who, who kind of, you actually never met the butler last time. Uh, there was just two footmen that you interacted with. Um, so uh, he he stands there and, and looks at you and goes, may I help you? Uh, yes. Um, you may announce the Lady Sean, uh, her companion Diablo, and uh, butler Sarsha Diablo, man uh, we are have returned to see um, Mr. Adam to check on his well-being, of course. Oh, indeed. One moment, please. And he steps into the house. And do they think I'm a bad guy? Uh, Adam thinks that last... you. Yeah, 
Adam is fairly convinced that you <laughs> had some oh, no, level of care um, to do, but uh, inside the house, uh, inside the house, you do hear the butler, like, because the door is open, right? Normally he would have closed the door and gone and gotten someone and, or figured out what to do with you. And But uh, the door is open because people are going in and out. So you hear him, he stepped away from the door and he says into a room, you know, Lady Sean, uh, and makes the announcement. And you, then you hear another voice that goes, oh, is that someone else you're carrying on with? And like, then like you hear something smash and uh, you hear like, uh, you hear the Duke's voice and he's like, no, I don't know anything about what, the, what, what are you talking about? You know, um, and uh, then um, uh, eventually the, like you hear the conversation get quieter and then the butler comes back and goes, please uh, come with me. I will take you to the conservatory. Uh, and takes you in and you walk through the the big marble entry uh, and he takes you down a short hallway that leads to a full on one of those, uh, you know, it's a glass room, right? With the, the um, wrought iron supports, the whole sort of stereotypical thing. Um and it is just full of tropical plants, right? And there's like misters that keep the place humid. And he gestures to a, a like a white painted metal wrought iron, you know, those fancy outdoor table kind of things sitting there with chairs around it. And he says, I, I will go uh, and fetch Master Adam um, and be right with you. I will send uh I will send a footman if you would require any refreshment. Glass of milk, ice. Very good, sir. Anything else? I will have some tea as well. Uh water's fine. And Sir's just like, this is amazing. <laughs> like, you know, it's it's got uh like there's Plumeria growing and all kinds of stuff that should not be, Ooh. but clearly they're paying an exorbitant amount to keep this room heated at all times. Um, but yeah, so it's it's in this room. It's a little bit uncomfortable stepping in from London cool after a rain kind of weather, but it's beautiful and it smells wonderful. Um, and a few minutes go by and then a. Uh, Tea cart is brought in that has, uh, you know, a, a pitcher of milk on it, and then a bowl, you know, a big ice bucket, um, and uh, tea and and everything. There's even coffee and some pastries and stuff that are brought out. Um, and then eventually, Adam comes in the room, right, and when he steps down the couple of steps into the conservatory, he like, uh, like. Takes a couple of steps in and he goes, yes, yes, it's a busy day. I don't know how I'm going to show my... And then, like, he stops mid-sentence when he sees Diablo and just, like, backpedals and, like, his shoes slips out from under him on the smooth uh, stone floor and he falls back on the steps and he's like, ah! And he's, like, trying to do, like, the backwards crab walk to get up the steps and away. Um, <laughs> and, yeah. So he is losing his mind. I think Sean oh. will like very calmly get up and walk over to him and do the like take his arm and help him up thing. And I think there's been some confusion. How are you, Adam? You seem ill at ease. <laughs> what? I, why would? What? Why? Did you not do enough? Did you? Your vileness has come back, and like, yeah, he's like. Get away from me! Get out of my home! I would ask that you be polite to Lady uh, Cersei. She did her best. <laughs> he like he's just confused. <laughs> yeah. Uh, like, uh, like, how can you be walking free? You should be locked up. Uh, and like. 
he's getting closer to the door. If someone wants to, can I use to... my conjuring tricks to, uh, like produce like a pair of glasses to put onto his face to kind of like what I want to do is like like you're. I think you're having a flashback. You're seeing who you saw on the day of the attack, aren't you? This is my compatriot Diablo who helped save you on that day. You're okay, confused, yeah, dear Adam. Right. <laughs> I'm gonna gaslight uh, the shit out of this man. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh god. The you most can, evil can... thing we've done in the campaign. <laughs> you can totally do that. Um so uh well why like uh why don't you do uh empathy manipulation but i'll okay. give you i'll give you a plus one for your like uh, clearly you you need help like doing your conjuring and yeah kind of a thing like producing glasses and placing them on his face kind of <laughs> yeah kind of the deal. distraction of going like where did those yeah. glasses come from what am i looking at yeah yeah okay uh empathy and manipulation you said Yes. Uh -huh. Okay. Come on, dice. Do a good job. They didn't, so I'm going to push. Okay. I feel like him making a scene is a bad thing. Yeah. What? If he gets to the edge of the room, then someone's going <clears> to... <throat> can I get ready to knock him out? or? You absolutely can be prepared. If ah, Two successes. Okay. So he like you kind of close with him and then when you put your you put the glasses on him and he's like what and like just kind of you're like resting your hand on his temple a little bit right and he kind of is just like what he tried to but he was the one that had no oh and like he just sort of starts to cry right like he clearly like I guess this is like two days later right like the, he has not had time to process what happened at all like even a little bit um and like he never saw patricia at all right like she snuck past them uh so he didn't have any idea what was happening or any of that so like he's just confused and more just as he lost in his emotions, right? More than anything else. Can I, uh, okay, how, how do I explain it? Can I comfort him, at, like, at, like, do the, like, mom hug, but also, like, just kind of reinforce that it was definitely not, or at least whatever he, like, and reinforce the gaslighting while comforting. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God. Yeah, yeah but uh, hang on people. one second, because I have one more thing to do. <clears throat> with the original uh ah okay uh so with your extra success on your original manipulation roll uh you can uh you can impose a mental condition if you want so Ooh. you could make him uh you could make him frightened or hopeless. Uh those would be the ones uh, angry would probably not be what you want. No. But but gaslit. Well, confused is confused available? No. Yeah, uh, I feel like hopeless is kind of the most like similar one to like that sure. feeling of like I guess whatever my mind is telling me is completely wrong and giving up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Sorry, bud. Uh, so you, uh, uh, you, you manage to get him to the point where he is confused and he's doubting his own memory, and he's like, "But it, I saw it. I don't." And like, tears are streaming down his face, and he's just kind of like. Ah, uh, like he stopped trying to get away. He he just doesn't know what to do, right? He's just like, but why were you all there? And what what happened? 
uh, mm. without curing that condition, can I comfort him and calm him down? Just uh, dump a yeah. bunch of empathy on it, on this. You, you sure can. You can inspire him. Cool. Like empathy and inspiration. Yeah. <laughs> Just need him to like stop making a scene. Cry your little bitch tears. Also, is it gaslighting if we're technically telling the truth? <laughs> this is fair. I mean, oh god. Fair. <laughs> I think it was the hand puppet stuff. Three successes. The yeah. hand puppet stuff did yeah. not help. Yeah. No, no, it did not. Or did it? Maybe not doing enough of the hand puppet stuff caused this scenario. Uh, three successes. Three, okay. This is the uh, thing that I do. <laughs> yes. So like you you managed to uh you managed to like you walk over to him and help him up off the floor and he kind of follows you back over to the table. Um and he like essentially with, with that many successes you're able to feed him a new reality, in my opinion, right? Like, he is willing oh, to accept your version of events, even though they're Excellent. fantastical and, like, whatever happened, there was some horrible person that was down below that got away uh, that you were trying to chase. You know, you got there Again, too late to help his so friend. And... Actually, the, the truth. truth. <laughs> yeah, right, right. I, think, I mean, yeah. Like we at at a certain point in Happy Jacks games, we sometimes get to like real deep questions, and I don't know what truth gaslighting is. Like I, I don't <laughs> like I don't know how we're that telling works. you what happened. Uh, <laughs> we're just using yeah. the tools of the bad of bad people to do it. <laughs> right. Maybe yeah. leaving out the claws and the monstery part. Yeah, of it. I think I yeah. think Sersha kind of like does this. Like she's she's used to taking care of younger kids. She goes full like mom governess mode and just sits with him and is like, and you you know how sometimes parents have mom voice or like parent voice? Oh, it's sure. that. <laughs> but in like the nice way, not the like get off the counter sort of way. Sure. No, no. Like you instill Stop that sense of calm. <laughs> yeah. Uh and and he kind of he kind of pulls it together and he goes. Eventually, you know, he stops crying and he takes a few breaths and he's like, oh, okay. It's you were there to feeling. try and stop the murderer that was coming after us and, okay. What? Uh, I give him what? the Disney version. <laughs> yeah, you know, it's just, just, you know, it's, it's a, to him, it's the new generation of Jack the Ripper tale, right? Like, mm -hmm. it's, there's some... A horrifying villain in London that that has been doing these terrible things, mm -hmm. kind of a deal. But uh, so he gets to the point where eventually he's willing to like talk with you. He's like, "What can I? Can I help you apprehend this villain?" Or this is what? like the ancestor of Jim Henson. This is how it all came to be. <laughs> Where puppets? Yeah, I'm getting it. It's really scary when things like this happen, and it's okay to feel our feelings. Uh, like just gentle parenting this guy um mm. but uh you we're going to take care of it just if we have questions or need resources we're happy to ask for help from you well i'm happy to give us money <laughs> <laughs> what <laughs> she's like if you we have if we need resources we'll come to you first well i'm i'm happy to help in whatever way I can, I, I know Father has quite a few friends at Scotland Yard. Also, I'm sure he could provide oh, no. logistical help. Oh, with, we'll, with we'll be trying to find Scotland this Yard. <laughs> villain. I, I mean, you you got closer than they have. I believe you, but I I whatever I can do to help. You know. Stop uh, others from paying this kind of a price. Well, it seems that there's a lot going on today. Uh, if you don't mind me asking, what is happening? And she sort of indicates the 
open door and like the yelling adults in the other I think that he's an adult but like the yelling people in the other room uh he he kind of sighs and he goes I I am trying not to be involved in any of that but my mother has decided that She's not going to put up with father anymore, I guess. And I don't honestly know how I'm ever going to be able to go anywhere in society again. Um, but uh, at least we're still rich. Put up with I what? <laughs> I, I guess uh, father has decided that he doesn't that he'd rather spend time with a, a, a mistress of some sort, I guess. What's her name? I'm not... I don't know. How I, did she find out about the mistress? I I honestly... These are questions I don't want to know the answers to. Can you hear them through the wall sometime? No. Look at the size of our house. My room is 300 yards away. What do you even do with this space? Well, it may be important, Adam. Even if something seems like it might be unrelated, it could help us catch this mysterious murderer. If they've murder targeted you and your there. family before, perhaps they're targeting your father through this mistress. What? Oh. Your roller skates seem to yeah. slide from room to room. It could be nothing. I but if your father were in danger, you would want us to find out, wouldn't you? Or if you were in danger by not telling us as much as possible right here, right now. Yes, yes. Uh, well, let me think. Um, and then I think that's actually a great place for us to take our break because I forgot and I let things run Woo. way over again. Sorry. <laughs> um, so... We will we will return in about five minutes uh, if you're watching live or almost instantaneously if you're not through magic. Uh, we will uh, talk to you all uh, in just a couple. You had a wonderful few minutes to recuperate and stand up and walk around and maybe drink some water, and be a healthy person. That'd be great because we don't want to have any smaller an audience because people forgot to move from their computer for too long. So, uh, Adam, he kind of, he's like, I, I honestly never suspected that, that my father was the type of person that would carry on with anyone. Right. Yep. That's not, that's not the kind of, kind of person I ever suspected he was. But uh all I know is when I woke up this morning there was an argument going on and uh next thing I knew there were trucks and mother's things were being loaded up and she is going out to the country house for the time being and I don't really get why I mean, from her yelling, obviously, there's some kind of mistress involved, but I don't I don't know much more than that. I certainly haven't met this person. I would assume that it's a, an unfortunate circumstance. Uh, what color is Adam's hair, by the way? Like, is he uh, fairly, like, fair-colored? I don't recall how I described the dead. Neither do I. I just remember he was tall. Mm -hmm. yes, he had yes, dad hair. Yeah. Yes. Uh, well, I mean, like, they look they look like they could be related. Uh, we'll say that they both have uh, kind of that dark chestnut hair. Um, I have a uh, secondary pet theory. Okay. Uh, uh, but yeah. Yeah. So I mean, clearly they look like they could be father and son, right? The Adam is much shorter than than the dad, 
Adam's like six one and the dad's like six eight. Right? Um but yeah, they other than that, they you know, facially look a little similar and are they still are the parents still fighting in the other room? Uh I mean you don't hear more yelling, um, but there's still activity of things being carried out of the house. Uh, I'm trying to think of the most tactful way to do this, uh, which is I want to see if I can talk to either of them about the situation without seeming like we're trying to like be a reporter. Like I want to make it seem like it ties back to the case. Mm. Um, I think, well, Xian already said, explained like, oh, hey, this, we think that she's kind of posing as temptresses uh in that vein maybe i understand this is a bad time but maybe talk to one of your parents perhaps oh, oh, your father right i can go have a talk with them i can get past awkward into trying to help i guess uh do you do you want to stay here or we can wait okay all right and he kind of stands up and pushes himself up from the table and and he kind of slouches over to the door uh, but then he gets to the door and kind of inhales through his nose and it's almost like he's inflating himself back to being a nobleman um and he uh then walks up the couple of steps and out of the room uh, and he's gone for a few minutes, and let's see what he turns up. Okay. Come on. Uh, he comes back in, and he kind of looks at you all sort of shocked and explains, like, I, I don't. I don't know how this happened, um, but father said that he loves this new woman and doesn't want to be with mother anymore, and it's true love, and he's been waiting his whole life to find it, and he seems absolutely smitten. You mentioned a name by any chance? Uh, yeah. <clears throat> that sounds like her wait have i been seduced um perhaps you have perhaps you have i think i'm okay with that uh he says he says that her name is ella We'd Ella. like to speak to your dad. All right. Um, if I take you over to the room and then I come back and wait here, would that be all right? <laughs> That'd be perfect. Okay, good. And he looks relieved. Uh, <laughs> Why and, don't you uh, take this time to write about your feelings or something? <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I just don't necessarily want to want to go talk to my father twice about his lover. Like that's very a sexual not, love affair with an individual. That's, that's not, not your mom. That's not what I would like to do for the rest of the day. So, and he he kind of walks you across to. Uh, there's uh, it's it's a smaller room. It it's set up like a study. Right? Like it's got a desk and some bookcases and stuff. And then behind, there's a set of doors with glass in them. And behind that, you see that there's just a massive library. Right? Like, um, yeah, it's, it's like a full two stories and well, everything behind. But you see that, uh, that the Duke is sitting at the desk and he's kind of, you know, he's he's writing some letters. 
when you walk in. And he, he sees you walk in and he goes, excuse me. Oh, oh, it's, it's you again. Uh, I heard about the poor Essex boy. I, very unfortunate. But I'm glad that he was found. But what 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 are you doing here today of all days? It was quite unfortunate. Um, we did came to check on your son Adam to make sure that he was all right after the incident. Um, and why would he not be all right? Well, he was through a traumatic event. Mm -hmm. And well, I mean, the... he found out that his cousin died, but it's not. Well, sure, but there is uh, an assailant on the loose still who was targeting young men of the nobility, it seems. So we wanted to make sure that he was all right. Good heavens. No one informed me of anything like that. I would have brought on some extra security. Well, that's why we're here now. Oh, I see. You've, you've concluded that investigation. Now you're working as security, then. Hmm? No, to inform you that that is why we are here now. Oh, I see. I see. We are yeah. continuing the investigation, actually. Did you get the full story? Well, I, I heard that, that... Your son... We found uh, in the apartment of a... Kicking Diablo under the table, <laughs> seriously. Why, what are you doing to my, my leg? <laughs> oh. <laughs> She's just looking at Sersha like, please do something. Uh, the, uh, uh, the, 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 the assailant, uh, your son was very brave but did help us track down the murderer who did get away. And really? he did, he saw some of the details. Good heavens. My son? Among other things. He was very brave. I've never heard anyone mention bravery and Adam's name in the same sentence before. Are you well, sure you're not confused? Well, then he was quite humble about it, and he drew from a well of bravery that I assume comes from his noble line. Uh, Sergio looks incredibly, oh. like, start, like it, the, the, it, she gets disingenuous as she says it. Um, <laughs> anyway, uh, what were we talking about? Uh, oh, you were talking about the well, assailant, the murderer, who is targeting men of the nobility, which yes. is why we're here to speak to you, sir. About yes. your lover. What? To be indelicate, um, upon checking on Adam, we found out a little bit about what's uh, going on here in the house. And just to do our due diligence and rule out every possible possibility, um, we would like to ask you for the name of your lovely lady. You're saying that this murderer is a murderess? Well, and... could be. I'm not entirely sure what her pronouns are, to be honest. Oh. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably fluid. I don't know. Yeah. And what with well. the targeting of men of the nobility, you see, we couldn't help but think that perhaps... We should oh, well, inquire to make sure of your safety as well. Oh, well, I appreciate that, but but my my Ella wouldn't have anything to do with it. No, no, of course not. But you see, we just want to make sure and rule out that possibility that someone may be using her to get to you. Oh. If you're interested, um, Lady Sean here is uh, a pretty... Uh, she is an expert on the act of seduction. We don't um, need to go into any of that. <laughs> oh, I was just going to offer your, uh, you know. If, 
I think oh. the Duke has his hands full. All right. Um, no. You see, I... I, I can't imagine. I, I feel like... I feel like I've known Ella for far too long to be part of a murder plot. And when did I, you meet meet Miss Ella? I so long ago I I hardly recall. I it must have been during one of the seasons years past, you know. I, Is the affair new then? Well, yes. What changed? I reunited with her. Recently? Yes, yes. And I didn't realize how much I'd missed in my life. Far be it, be it for me to keep someone from being happy. Um, But what... Uh, what color is Ella's hair? Well, it's it's much much similar to mine. It's sort of this brown. All right. And she is a member of society like yourself, Ben. Uh, I I don't recall where. She grew up. And you uh, see he's like puzzling, like he's thinking yeah. about it. But she's a member of a noble house like yourself. Well, she must be, yes. I don't recall which. A little confused for someone who rem knows a lot about her and remembers and you know came up with her. Well, you know, as I said, it was a long time ago. I would have um, thought that most hmm. society people knew other society people. I know many, but I don't know all of them. I, I, I don't know Lady Sean here at all until we met recently. Uh, well, I mean, no, of course. That's because I'm from, and then she lists the longest... <laughs> Town name in Wales. So what? What if we did this? Because let, we should correct that. Why don't you take you and uh, your lover? Why don't we go to a lovely restaurant? Um, we'll um, have a love to celebrate your newly uh, acquired um, adventure in love. You can oh. go to a lovely fancy place wine and dine and talk about wonderful sweet things well i think that sounds delightful uh, of course of course yes yes excellent and i will give me an opportunity to show my face and say that i'm not afraid of those press members outside exactly yes Show them. All right. Well, I'll uh, set up the details, and I'll call about the reservation. Uh, if you excuse me, is there a bathroom? Oh well, of course, of course. And he like reaches over and he pushes a button on the desk, and uh, one of the footmen walks in. He says, this, uh, "This is witchcraft." She must. She must go use the facilities, please. And he. He. Oh, he bows and and gestures for you to follow him. Uh, as, as soon as we're out of earshot, I would like to see if, the footman. If uh, I would like to ask the footman about. Uh, does, the lady Norfolk have a lady's maid? Of course. Uh. Part of the investigation. Do you mind if I speak with her? Well, in the mood she's in today, I would wish you good luck. Uh, not, not the lady. Uh, her, her maid. Oh, 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 well, you'll have to catch her. I'm sure she's busy packing upstairs. Oh, 
Uh, in that case, uh, I could just run up. Oh, well, certainly. And but uh, the footman yeah. is like, "Am I still taking you to the restroom?" <laughs> uh, I'll just point the direction, and I'll I'll go back down. He kind of gestures at the rest of the house with one arm, like, "There are many to choose from. Which would you like to visit?" I will find a room with a toilet, and then uh, I will take off up the stairs towards. The and he kind of bewilderedly room. walks off, and he's like, "At least I, the Duke can't see me, so." <laughs> I did my part. I'm about to take a very long time in the bathroom. Sure. Um, you uh, you get up the stairs. What's your What's your goal? Uh, I would like to find so so twofold. Uh, if I can just talk to the lady's maid and get it well, get a look at the Duchess and see if she looks like Patricia. Um, or if she looks like basically, I'm, one, I'm looking for blondes. <laughs> getting blondes looking for blondes uh the second thing is uh if i can find the ladies maid i might get a better story as to what's going on uh and also i want to see if i can find this is a little long game i want to see if i can catch the duchess on her own as a separate entity from whoever was working like talking to the duke uh okay. just so we can kind of play them against each other regarding evidence and stuff but it's a lot it's weird i'm okay this felt smarter when i was thinking it and not saying it out loud nah, that's good i think it i think it'd be good yeah yeah because like while you take the duke out to dinner with his mistress i can go out with the duchess is the plan oh yeah we got a double date oh we should make them go to the same restaurant that's a triple date. Uh, that's how a triple awkward date. would that be <laughs> And that's... fight in public. <laughs> yeah, yeah. If that's the plan, I'm excited. <laughs> <laughs> Not to have a cage match, but to like see if we can. But to have a cage match. I don't know. What happens, happens. Yeah. <laughs> cage match or the... catch a flossin. Hmm. Yeah. yeah. Chips fall where they lie. Exactly. Okay. So uh, you, um, you get up to the stairs and you can follow the signs of activity to to where at least her lady's maid and several other upstairs uh, workers are are packing up trunks and boxes of clothes and shoes and everything else. So you can talk to one of them fairly easily. Yeah, um, without going like full, I'll like peek in, just look at a look at the Duchess before uh, seeing if I can get another servant to get the ladies maid out of the room. I'll tell them it's sure. Ireland Yard. I don't know. I don't know if we said we have a, I guess I can tell them it's the Rose House. I don't, Rose Society. Sure. Uh, you can. Uh... I just don't want to have that conversation in the room with the Duchess. Sure. Um, you can... Uh, it takes a minute, but you catch one of the people that's coming out with, with a box. Um, and you can send them back in to get the ladies made out. Um, and... Uh, uh, she sets down the box on the side table and she goes, all right, and turns around and goes back in and, and a, a minute later, this harried looking woman comes out um, and she says, yes, what, what can I? I am so sorry to interrupt this process. Uh, I understand that time is very limited. I just had a few questions regarding the investigation uh, for the Duke of Essex. Yes, that. Oh, oh, all right. It's complicated. Uh, uh, wh what is happening? She uh, did the Duke just decide he was leaving his wife? Well, yes. Uh, he announced yesterday to the staff that she and her belongings were to move to the country house. And 
that his intention was to leave her and marry some person, some other person. It's uh, quite a um, scandal and all. Have you heard anything about this? Uh, I think her name's Ella. Yeah, well, I mean, other than then that's her name. That's, but none of I you certainly have haven't met her. her. Yeah, I, not to my knowledge. Certainly, certainly we wouldn't have tolerated that kind of behavior here in the house. Well, that's what I thought. Uh, and no one has heard of her before now. Even just in passing, it's rather odd. Why? I can't say that that any. Well, I've certainly never heard the name. I'm, I no, never it, would have suspected the Duke was off seeing someone else in the first place. That sounds out of character, doesn't it? Yes, hmm. but who knows you know, the secret lives of these people? I, hmm. I would have a talk with his valet if you were going to talk to anyone. I, that is true. Uh, I guess I managed to find you first. Uh, if you don't mind, do you know where he is right now? I'm sure he's probably laying out the afternoon clothes for the Duke. Do you mind pointing me in that direction? And he kind of gestures to the other side of the upstairs, right? The other wing of the house. Excellent. Uh, apropos of nothing, uh, a good friend of mine is... Uh, well practiced in alternative arts and if your lady has any desire to mend her broken heart through uh occult means perhaps she might give us a call and i hand her uh i hand her uh Shion's card okay <laughs> wow shade on the lady for the funeral but divorces are open <laughs> I yeah, know, right? Like, right? Listen, Man. listen. Grieving people, not okay. Broken heart, <laughs> excellent. Go for Isn't it. Isn't it still grieving? It's a different kind of grief. <laughs> listen, these people are rich, and Sersha does not care. Yeah, it's also fair. <laughs> all right, Eddie. all right. So, uh, uh, so she kind of looks at the card, and she's like, "Oh, all right." I understand these times are hard, and sometimes it is nice to speak to someone who understands. Uh, the broken heart. And uh, Sersha just sort of trots off to the uh, other room to see the ballot. <laughs> Amazing. <Okay. laughs> no uh, one so questions you... this like weird Irish lady who's just running around like, awesome. Well, you well, made we it upstairs. Too. Like, yeah. like that. that's the, you know, we've talked about the trick to, to being, if you're just somewhere where you shouldn't be and you just play it off like you belong there, most times it's going to work. Oh know? yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, you you get to the other side of the house and it is much more subdued. Um, there's uh, uh, not a lot of activity over here at all or anything. But you, I, I guess you're just going to start checking rooms, right? Like, uh, I think, yeah, I feel like uh, my instinct is find the room at the end of the hall. That seems like a big ass room. Uh, sure, sure. Seems like a I master mean, bedroom situation. It takes you a few minutes to get to the other side of the house and get over there. And But uh, you okay. open the door and there is a, there's a, a quite an old gentleman that's got just got the the horseshoe of of white hair you know left um but he is standing in front of uh you know a, a valet rack right so he's got a coat on the rack and he's brushing it and uh you can see on on uh top of the dresser next to him he's laid out uh, you know four f pairs of cuff links and four different watches and uh <laughs> Just, you know, everything is, is presented there for quick choices to be made. And... Ah, excellent. A watch for each time. This is not the bathroom. I am completely lost. You must be the Duke's valet. <laughs> Indeed. Oh, excellent. Uh, I 
I had a, I did want to speak to you as well, but I'm so sorry to interrupt. Um, I had just a few questions uh, regarding the Duke and his situation. All the Duke's clothes will be prepared shortly. Would you like me to wait before you answer questions or can you multitask? I am sure uh, a, a watch for every arm is sufficient. You speak very quickly. Are I you do. in a rush? I usually am. Ah. Well, what questions do you have to ask then? The, uh, uh I guess Mistress Ella, Miss Ella. Yeah. Do you know of, do you know her? The Duke seems rather smitten. But you haven't met her yourself. No, why would I? I don't know. You're the Duke's man. I don't accompany him on trysts. <laughs> distasteful conduct. Yes. Oh, judgy. Uh, do you... Well, what... Did he make an excuse when he was going on these trysts? You must have noticed. He went out. He said that he would return. It was, I don't know, three or four hours behind schedule. Has he shown he up recently with yellow flowers? Yellow flowers? I, 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 the Duke tends to prefer tropical flowers. Some are yellow. Uh, I'm sure the gardens have many. Little ones uh, that you probably wouldn't grow. Uh, hmm. Browsing no, I, is the I, word. I can't say that I've seen any small flowers in the rooms. Hmm. Besides, if he were being so distasteful to bring flowers back from a woman he went to see... I can't imagine. All At right, the very well, least, he should be taking the flowers to her, don't you think? Some ladies like to give tokens. Ugh. Modern people. <laughs> uh, I think... Uh, see, it's not pointing to Vasen, so now I'm... Or this is not what we've known Patricia to do. Uh, I think at his uh, whole modern, I think Sersha just, I don't like your tone. I do get, uh, I do accept the, uh, the notion and uh, Sersha will just turn on a heel and start to walk away. Bathrooms this way, I assume. Down the hall, last door on your left. Excellent. Enjoy. Uh, all of these sort of gestures. <laughs> hmm. uh, yeah, I'll, I guess unless there's any, I can't think of any more snooping to be done. Check uh, his room? Well, I was just in his room. I guess. <sighs> Did you smell everything though? I didn't. I was, I, it would have been weird to walk around and sniff oh, stuff. Come on. Yeah, but you do that. That's what we do. We sniff things. Uh, as we're headed, as I head back, if I can catch another of the uh, servants, is there a laundry room by any chance? Yes. There's the laundry. And he, he like walks you over to, uh, there's a door and he opens the door and inside there's, it's a linen closet, right? So there's folded sheets and everything listed there, you know, stacked no. and, and everywhere. And then he points at uh, you know, a uh, uh, shoot. Well, where does that go? Well, down to the basement. Uh, where else would we keep the laundry? As part of this investigation, I do need to check that. Need to check the shoot or the laundry? The laundry in the shoot in the basement. Well, check if you're then, like mixing light, light and dark. I suppose you should proceed downstairs then, shouldn't you? I. 
I'll go on, I'll find it on my own. Uh, and I was hoping he'd take me, but I will find it in this cavernous I mean, house. <laughs> if you get somebody he works for to direct him to take you there, I'm sure he'll be happy to. But yeah. he doesn't know who you are. He's like a random guy that was walking down the hallway. That's valid. Uh, it's very, very tempting to just jump down this chute. Do it. Uh, we didn't no, jump I'll, down last time. You have to this time. I don't think human adults fit in laundry chutes. Not just, with that attitude. Not with that attitude. Uh, I think uh, if Sersha can find someone who does know where the basement is, we're just going to keep doing this. <laughs> Yeah, you, you like one step at a time. You can make your way down to the basement. It's fine. Uh, and you get in the laundry, and like it's, it's actually got modern laundry machines. So there's like an electric agitator, and Ooh. there's a, a electric mangle as you know, my favorite laundry machine. Oh my gosh. <laughs> The mangler. <laughs> oh my gosh. Uh, um, yeah, I'm looking and there's, for. There's uh, like, there's three yeah. or four people in there that are like actively, like, you know, they're pressing sheets and like it is an active operation. Like, it's not quite like, you know, Charlie and the Chocolate Factory vat of laundry, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. But like, there are the machines are running and there's a couple people pressing and somebody's folding things. And, uh, hello, uh, from the investigation, uh, uh, I just had a few questions. Also, uh, are the Dukes, is the Dukes going out clothing here? Well, what from last going night out? or the night before? Oh, well, no, that would probably have been folded and put away already. Already? Yes, we work here every day. All right, plan B. How, um, how else would we keep up? No, you're... Uh, how? Mm, oh God, Did sorry. they have condoms yet? Should we be checking the trash can? Uh, I. They would, but not here, I assume. Uh, yeah. not if You've I'm seen no that evidence that anyone in this house has met this element. Yeah. Uh, odd question. Have you seen... Any yellow? Uh, has the Duke brought home any little yellow flowers? Uh, Not tropical. Uh, probably local. Uh, you see, uh, this young man, right? He's probably like sixteen, right? And he he goes, I've seen little yellow flowers. And like one of the one of the ladies running the the mangle like reaches over and like smacks him upside the head like you don't talk about business with people, and he's like ah and ducks away <laughs> and he goes he goes like as he's running out of the room he goes go look at the garage ha ha and then looks like runs away. <laughs> uh, excellent. Uh, yeah. cool. You got lucky there. Yeah. Um, okay. Do I, I'm like, I feel bad not having everyone else come with me to do nah, investigating. Roll it. Roll it. Uh, well, thank you. Uh, and Sersha, I guess, I think, hmm. I'm trying to decide if there's anything else I can get out of laundry. Laundresses, I don't think I can. Uh, gonna run upstairs. To, uh, could you point me where the garage is? And or like I'll chase the, lady, the guy out. <laughs> I'll chase the other the the, the other the, servant the, out. The, yeah. Well, like you, I mean, it's safe to assume that it's probably going to be like on this floor, or mm -hmm. or maybe one up if it's out, like a detached kind of garage kind of a thing. But, um, like he pounds down the hallway and he goes the end of the hall and like then disappears around some corner. <laughs> Yeah, so she just spins uh, off. It has been a way too long to have been in the bathroom, but I do not care. Yeah, you've been a very like you are very ill. Yeah, uh, I'll just yeah, yeah I think cover, that's what we I, tell. I assume I assume Diablo will cover for me. Yeah, and I'll it will be, like, be bad. Yeah, I'm like uh, you know she has a uh, uh, kind of this gastrointestinal issues. She uh, it's really hard for her to really let it go. When it does come out, it gets everywhere. I'm really sorry. 
Uh, I'm sure Lady Sean can handle the repairs to your restroom. I will um, not. Okay, she will not. <laughs> um, <laughs> so I guess you're just on your own to deal with that mess. Uh, good luck. Um, while we are distracting the Duke, I do want to kind of examine him for any uh, signs of bewitchment. Oh, all right. See if some uh, supernatural uh, bewitching has been. <laughs> no, supernatural not... hickeys? Uh, I guess. <laughs> so, yeah, uh, let's see. Observation and... Uh, I mean... What do you normally roll for your occult? Like, when you're contacting spirits? What, what is... Um, let's see. Medium is observation and empathy, yeah. Okay, yeah, so it's definitely that. Okay. Just figure we'll take a look at him, see if he's, I don't know, been magicked in some way. Mm, these dice are really not helping today. Um... Yeah, screw it. Let's push. See if we can okay. do a better job than that. Oh. You get anything? No, one fell off the table. Hold on. Oh, come on. That's the one. Oh, where'd it go? It's gone forever. Diablo that, stole it from underneath that the That one is gone forever. Okay. What? Don't put that evil on me, Ricky Bobby. <laughs> nope. No successes. Okay. So uh, you need to take the dice. condition. Yes. Um, so you, you try and, like, reach out with your senses, right? Um, but it almost feels like somebody slamming a door in your face, right? You, you like... You try and reach out, and clearly his stoic wall of nobility is too great to be pierced by minor occult dabblings. The stick uh, of his ass is witch hazel. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. uh, Fair enough. So, I've taken so, angry because I'm annoyed that I can't tell what's wrong with him. Sure, sure. <laughs> that absolutely works. Um... Let's go to the garage. So you step into the garage and uh, it's it's actually much longer uh, the, um, than you would have thought, right? Like it's it's not very deep, uh, but there's a there's a ramp that leads down to this lower area. And then there's like seven cars that are parked in in this garage, right? Why? There's a small like there's a small truck that's clearly like the gardener can use. There's uh an open top like coupe kind of a thing. There's a uh, a beautiful Rolls Royce. Um, like I wonder when uh, the first Mustang was. <laughs> um. But uh, the uh, like the Rolls Royce, it looks a lot like the one if you ever watch Boardwalk Empire. Uh, um, uh, what's his face? Nucky Thompson's had this blue, uh, Roy, uh, this beautiful blue Rolls Royce, and it's of that same era. Um, and you can see, uh, after you take a minute and look at these cars, you can see in the open top. Coupe, there's uh, attached to the dashboard, nice. there's a, a, a flower vase, right? That's that's there, and in it, you do see a little cluster of gorse flowers. Gotcha, bitch. All right, uh, I will steal a little a, a sprig of the flowers. Uh, Huff the car, because why the fuck not? You're taking the car? No, I'm going to smell the car. 
specifically oh, the passenger seat. I'm gonna smell the seat of the passenger. Oh, 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 the butt smell. <laughs> yeah, oh. look, <laughs> I'm not proud of it either. Can we clip that? I like how the guy who eats people is <laughs> the guy who eats people is out. I may be, be a cannibal, chill, but I'm but... not a sniffer. Yeah, <laughs> like I'm not sniffing people's ass. Like, God damn. All right, All right. Uh, make your make your allergy roll. Fucking hate it. Uh, we've done this like a billion times. I know, so and I always again. forget what what we came up with. I know it's like physic, uh, physique, and uh, shit. Vigilance, maybe. I yeah, because I don't roll very. Yeah. I don't only roll. I only roll two dice. Yeah, I think. It's, Holy it's, shit! Fox stars. Did you get a success? I got fox. I got two two successes. Two successes. Okay. Woo. Uh, so like, you get you like open the door of the car and you get close in there, and immediately, well, with two successes, we we said that you can choose what happens. Like, uh. you just are you just aware <laughs> of it, or do you actually get full symptoms? It's the like, it's like when you when you're allergic to cats and you walk into your house, you're like, oh, there's definitely cats here, but I didn't rub my face in like a cat's, you know. Yeah. I didn't rub my face in a cat tummy. Oh yeah, you're basically like sniffing kitty litter. Yeah. yeah. Um. <laughs> I think uh, Sersha like like sneezes, and uh, also I think it probably smells like if she has perfume on, like it might kind of mm-hmm. smell like her perfume. You yeah. know. Yeah. Well, uh, yeah, that's what she, gotcha, bitch. Uh, and just like kind of digs around the car a little bit to see if there's any actual other evidence uh, before leaving. Um, like a playbill, a love in letter. The, in the glove box, there's like a, a full set of women's lingerie. Oh my God! Uh, All right, what are we, what tops, are we talking about? Lacy, Victorian and, style, like latex. tops and bottoms and a garter and stock, like the whole shebang. <laughs> oh, but it tumbles up. Uh, is it I mean, for it's a, it's him? A, I is it his size? It doesn't. It does not appear that the stockings would reach past the knees of a man that's six foot eight, but. Uh, I still think he's slender is man. Is it weird to steal the underpants of yes. someone if it's evidence? But you've no. already sniffed their butt, so you're you're weird. Everything I have enough evidence. Extra. I have enough evidence. This is weird. Uh, I'll. You're stealing <laughs> the underwear of my potential future wife. I'm finding something that might help us track her. I'm going to take. <laughs> also, it looks like she's stocking? been stepping out on Diablo. Yeah, well, hold hey, on. You're maybe ladies. we're not like monogamous. Maybe like yeah. You know, yeah. Oh, that's fair. You know what? Yeah. Regardless of what you are, you should probably talk about it first. I'm gonna steal a stocking. Yeah, we're, and we're put that in one of my pockets. Okay. Uh, look around and then sprint back to the conservatory wherever we were in the okay. beginning. Uh, Sersha basically will show up after having taken way too long in the bathroom like sweating <laughs> like panting because she's just sprinted around this english manner yeah well when i hear that she's on the way i'll just be like if you guys would please not say anything uh she's very self-conscious about um <laughs> this issue and you can see that the you can see that the duke is just disgusted right like he is clearly like of course i wouldn't say anything please Dang. I am very busy today, however. I must finish <laughs> writing these letters. <laughs> yeah, so if you please. And, just, and he gestures to the door, like, <laughs> like panting. And now he's yeah, even uh, more creeped out. Like he's just like, oh, oh <laughs> you should see a are doctor. Are you okay? <laughs> Cersei? Uh, you need us to help you out? I got a little should lost. We get the, uh, yeah. the this place is huge, and uh, it was very hard, uh, but I did find a hey, bathroom. It's okay. it's okay. You don't have to lie. I already told them about your uh, issue, so we're, we're good. All right. 
Excellent. Well, if that's all concluded, um, <laughs> thank you for your time. Uh, we will see you at dinner with your lovely lady. Very good. Very good. I can't wait. I will send the car. Excellent. Select. Excellent. <laughs> yeah, I think our work here is done. Yeah, sure. we did good work. <laughs> just like, well, I was are you just going to leave much. or are you going to go tell Adam what's going on? Uh, I mean, we'll we don't have leave. to play out telling him the whole thing, but I just want to know whether he knows. We'll say goodbye, your... but I don't think we need to uh, uh, just and I would mention to say I would probably mention like keep an eye on your father. But sure. otherwise, I'm not like. But as we leave, I will show them the uh, gorse and the stocking. <laughs> All right. Shaking. Oh, no, I'm That's shaking my shot. head. <laughs> so, excuse me. You're going to head back to Rose House then? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. All right. Uh, you guys head head back. Um, and you get back to the house. And before it gets to be evening, uh, there's a knock at the door and uh, Hawkins answers it and you hear some conversation if you're downstairs. Uh, and then Hawkins turns around and says, pardon me, if you would please join us in the parlor. And uh, as you make your way to the parlor, in in the parlor is a man in a sort of rumpled suit and three uniformed police officers. Uh, and Hawkins says, these gentlemen would like to speak with you about a, an incident that must have happened several days ago. All of us? Yes. I'm just to help. I'll be up here. <laughs> and... Uh, before they start talking, I think that that is uh, that is a great place to stop for the night. And we could pick up with the interview with London's finest uh, oh. next time. <laughs> Got Sherlock Holmes on our ass. Eh. Stepped in it now. <laughs> yeah, but he's in our house. Yeah. Full of weird things. So. Our house oh, is full yeah. of weird shit. We can take him out. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> London's finest will not see the light of day after this. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> they well, were, they weren't gun they weren't like weapons drawn, you know. Let's see what holding they want their to know, billy clubs we'll like ready. A, to... <laughs> we'll have a pleasant conversation and they find out that we're better investigators and they'll leave us on our way. We're basically the Pinkertons, but cool. Sure. We're so that'll hit. be fine, I'm sure. Uh, all right. Uh, so, uh, thank you, Internet, for joining us uh, for Episode 7 of London Calling. Uh, we will be back next week uh, for Episode 8 uh, and to see what happens with law enforcement uh, butting up against the supernatural investigations. Uh, it'll be fun, and we'll see what's going on. And perhaps they'll save a Duke's marriage. I don't know. Or maybe they'll make it far worse. I also don't know. This could. Or maybe mean, one of them probably, will marry the duke. Who knows? We might make it say. better and worse. Right. <laughs> Solve all the problems and introduce new ones. Exactly. Uh, that's that's the policy. Uh, I have been Kadave. Uh, happy to be like a small rudder on a ship in a storm. Uh, <laughs> and. Uh, Let's go around the table again. Let's start with Clara this time. Hi, I'm Clara. I uh, was playing Sersha Sheehy, the writer, uh, tiny uh, Irish anarchist. Um, the <laughs> uh, I am all over the internet as clearly underscore golden, unless you're into mermaids, in which case you can find me on Instagram as mermaid underscore clarity. I have not updated that in a minute and I apologize. Uh, I don't, I'm lazy and uh, dives are expensive. Um, 
I'm here every Monday playing Vasen with these fine folk. Uh, I am sometimes over on Queen's Court Games playing the All Night Society as Myla Sombra investigator, who is uh, better at her, jo at her job than uh, Sersha is at this job. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> And uh, otherwise, I pop up every once in a while over on Life Action Roleplay, and sometimes even here again on Fridays doing the advice show, although I don't think I'm listed for the next, the next couple of weeks. Uh, we'll see how things shake out. Uh, but yes, best place to find out about that is on Twitter, about five minutes before I go live doing something. So, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, Sam. Hello, I'm Sam. Uh, I have been Sean Jones, the uh, real occultist fake Welsh person on this game. And on the internet, you can find me at Red Pandroid um, on most of the socials where I don't do much because I'm a hermit these days. Dig it. How about you, Mitch? Hi, I'm Mitch. Uh, you can find me on uh, the socials at Mitchell S. or Mitch. Yeah, Mitch S. Mitch S. Bustillos. Oh my god. I know who I am. Um, but uh, if you're going to Origins, uh, hit me up. I will be there Wednesday. So, um, uh, and over at the exhibit with my own booth and everything. So it would be great to say hi to people. So, say hi. Super red. Have a wonderful trip. I will. We Cool. Uh, all right. Uh, <laughs> Good night and good luck, I guess, is the only thing to say to everyone else. So, uh, oh, and uh, thank you to our moderators that hang out in the chat and make sure it stays an awesome place for everybody to hang out. And a huge thank you to Patreon folks whose names I shall make appear on the screen with more magic uh, for a little bit before we're all done. So thanks out there. We'll catch you next week. Bye.